Wake up, gamers, because you're listening to the Big Think Dimension with Dan and Bob Video Games. I'm going to spend the rest of the podcast talking like this. I'm Clive. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Chris Wolfhard. I forgot what I was going to say. And Dr. Agro. I have once again succumbed to the temptation of flesh. Here on Gigaboots. Bob, that was a test. That was my Trevor Belmont impersonation. Oh, yeah. If you were a real Castlevania fan, you would have caught that. <laughs> yeah, Clive is breathier. He's like more of a bimbo. <laughs> oh, I do say I've always depended on the kindness of icons. <laughs> yeah, that's closer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Chest slapping sound. Oh, my God. <laughs> I swear to God, the first time he just looks up into the camera with that face, I was like, what? Use your words. I don't speak bottom. <laughs> See, I was just like, man, they really just made like a care. They like took the, the multi-tier filter and just poured like the guy on the cover of a Bodice Ripper through like eight <laughs> layers of filtration down to get Clive. So pure, so distilled. He has like the perfect tragic dumb guy face. <laughs> yup. He, he's a human pit bull. He's just this big, muscly thing capable of terrible violence, but he's really just kind of stupid and wants someone to hug him. Yeah, that's really, that's pretty much it. We need somebody to put like Clive's hair on that pit bull and he's going, waiter, waiter, more icons, please. <laughs> uh, video games. No, it's true. Video games. It's true, Agro. <laughs> video games. Hey, Bob, are you going to be okay? I know Agro being in the room. <laughs> it's It's frightening. It's... It's, it's so really, large. It's, it's yeah, I don't know how intense. he. Uh, it's weird that he's like down there on the floor, just looking up at all of us. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be fine. <laughs> Where he's gonna get in? Wait a minute. Something's in the floorboards. <laughs> he can open doors. <laughs> We're doomed. Wait a second. How the fuck he unlock my car? <laughs> <laughs> you just hear like a beeper go off. <laughs> Uh, Bob and I played Luigi's Mansion along with Eric. Eric is not here. Mm. Agro got it to him. He's now in the, his bones are in the floorboards with Agro. <laughs> You're all next. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Jesus. Bob, this is your first time playing through Luigi's Mansion? Yes, this is not my first time touching Luigi's Mansion at all. Oh, yeah. I was like, I might have tried to demo you it back in the day, but that'd be it. You're like, yo, look at how many polygons are in this door opening animation. Yeah. Yeah, that sure is the best part of the game, seeing how many polygons are in that door animation. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that door opening animation is fucking unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's the Resident Evil 1 remake. Of door opening animation. It's even higher quality than that, I feel. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. It's insane. That has to be pre-rendered, you would think, but it looks too good to be pre-rendered. Yeah, like, there's no way. That is absolutely an engine, but all they are rendering is a doorknob in his hand. And, and, his, and it's it. fucking 60 <laughs> frames per second anime as hand. <laughs> you can see the sinews somehow through the glove. Just, uh, yeah, it, it's crazy. It's, it's there awesome. Was, I, I hear there was some other part of that game. I'm not too sure, yeah, though. That yeah. door opening animation took too much, like, <laughs> brain to, power. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> after the fact, you do just... It takes up all the space of remembering the game because it is truly outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, I, how'd you like the boss fight against the baby? Wow, it really must be gone if you don't instantly know what I I'm think, talking about. I think Eric played that. Yeah, I was going to say, I <laughs> don't... Re I remember him being really upset that he had to he play got, it. He got trapped in the crib with the baby. Yeah. I wasn't playing during that part. I played during other boss fights. Those were more outstanding <laughs> boss fights, I feel. Honestly, I don't know how that boss fight would have gone, because all I know is Eric walked into him while sucking, and the baby hated that. <laughs> Yeah, but baby, now now just imagining Eric with 
the hose of a vacuum cleaner, uh -huh. just jabbing a baby with it. And it's like pulling at the baby's face a little bit. And the baby is really unhappy. They're not crying yet. Yeah. They're really not enjoying it. They're just like, oh, what you, no. Why would you do this? Just Eric is one of those uncles who doesn't really understand the difference between horseplay and physical abuse. <laughs> <laughs> this That's... this pairs up really well coming off of Pikmin month. Yes. He's just like, uh, like 20 it's... children drowned. I had nothing to do with it. One of those uncles who's like, okay, shoving the kid's face into his birthday cake is funny one birthday in his life. <laughs> You've done it too many times now. You're no longer invited to gathering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Luigi Mansion is, is a pretty cool game. You go from room to room and you find out what's up with the rooms. You got to find the ghost. Where's the ghost in this room? You, you do that. You click all the stuff. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's basically the survival horror version of a spot the difference game. Yeah. Okay. I've always thought of it like that. And I feel like that energy really cranks up in Luigi's Mansion too. Um, oh my. So I'm wondering, because for people who haven't kept up, we're skipping two. We're doing three tomorrow. I have to wonder if that trend continues. <laughs> uh, as someone who, beat, no. as <laughs> someone who beat three, you're going to play three and be like, wow, this is the most sober Luigi's Mansion game ever. Probably. It, it is the one that sold like six million or something. Fourteen. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, it was a, a lot more than that. God, that's in that's inconceivable that 14 million people go. What if Luigi? I still more had people a have bought by by in terms of by uh, this is a true statement. <sighs> Luigi's Mansion 3 is the most successful horror game ever made. I yeah, I mean I still turn on my switch and see people playing it all the time. <laughs> Video games. <laughs> Like, when I was playing Tears of the Kingdom, I I saw someone who's just always online playing Luigi's Mansion 3, and I was like, is it as big as Tears of the Kingdom? <laughs> <laughs> On a somewhat related note, uh, as I was playing Final Fantasy 16 this morning, and I keep popping up the PlayStation bar to go, is, did Bob go to sleep? Can I go over to his house and play Pistol Whip? <laughs> You're just on the whole time, and I'm like, it must be a glitch. There's no way this motherfucker's still up playing this game. I had to finish it. It was 10 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's oh, what I no. thought. <laughs> it was like, I started the final level. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> <laughs> why did I do this? Um, all right. Well, we'll get to talk about that later. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, I'm very excited for. Because I played 2. And I wrote a whole review for 2. And then I realized 2, Luigi's Mansion 2. And I say this not to be funny, mean to anyone. This is just, as someone who liked Luigi's Mansion 1 back in the day and had a 3DS, I went, yeah, $40 for another one of those? That seems like a good deal. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Luigi's Mansion 2 is a game so mid, I wrote a whole review explaining how mid it was with a bunch of jokes and shit. And then I looked at it and I went, I don't even care enough to read it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we didn't make a luigi's mansion 2 review fun fact we have a review that ends with look forward to our luigi's mansion 2 review mm -hmm. yes it was in the pipeline we were making props for this fucking thing yeah no that oh my god you're right yeah we I... made a giant prop for this fucking video I forgot. Yeah. Well, it was most I think that was an aggro on me project, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That explains it. I don't know where that fucking chair went. I hope no one ever sat in it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, unwise. Imagine a chair made by two people with the wrong materials <laughs> and no knowledge of how to make a chair. And we said, it's okay. It just needs to survive one cool shot. <laughs> just you take a step back and you look at it and you think, that was definitely too many nails. Yeah, I'm good. We did this wrong. Now, the best part is I can't explain to people why I have this uh, nightmare hazard <laughs> lying in the backyard. I can't explain that to them. I'm just like, it's for a video. That chair is where the bad kids go. And then, <laughs> and, then and then one day it disappeared and I'm like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's not safe to keep around. And it's, I'm sure it's haunting a warehouse somewhere. <laughs> Some hipster buys it at a thrift store, and then suddenly there are noises in the middle of the night. 
his cat has killed itself on it. <laughs> oh, no, no. No. I would like to know, as far as I remember, none of the nail's pointy ends were sticking out. Just the flat ends a little and only like one. Um. Anyway, Luigi's Mansion 2. I'm going to let that escape the Switch and give it the best chance, or escape the 3DS to the Switch and give it the best chance humanly possible to be an enjoyable game. Mm -hmm. I need this to be a good one, man. Because yeah, having two three sticks would be. certainly help a lot. Oh, yeah, it would. But they don't use two sticks right at all in, in Luigi's Mansion 1. Because you aim well, your... Luckily, entirely different people made two and three. <laughs> You're right. That's you aim true. your vacuum up and down with the right stick. Uh-huh which is reversed for some reason. And also it will retain that information long past what it should. So you'll just be like, well, I had to aim up for a ghost like down the hall. <laughs> now when I turn my vacuum to shoot the ghost in front of me, it's going straight up still. <laughs> You're like, aha, I flashbang you ghost. Woo You're like celebrating <laughs> with the vacuum. Yes. Because it's fucking getting the ceiling. It's like Luigi's Mansion was supposed to be a twin stick shooter, but it was just a gen too early. <laughs> Speaking of too early to use two sticks, thinking about Mega Man Legends again. Stop that. Yep. Vox <laughs> tweeted about it. I was like, you know, this is dead. I'm just fucking pissed for several generations straight. All of seventh gen. I'm like, now's the time. And then they announced it for the 3DS, the one thing without two sticks. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> Bob, what were your impressions coming away from Luigi's Mansion 1? It's neat, but very much just a tech demo in a lot of ways. It was a pretty cool tech demo. It was. It was a pretty cool tech I mean, it's not as good as the bouncer. I mean, the no, ultimate no. tech demo. Obviously not. It can't compare it with the bouncer. But it's still a pretty neat game. I like Luigi. I don't really like Egad very much. But I you think don't that's, like Egad? Is it, that it's because it's of his sun, criminal record? Yes, it's sunshine residue. I know that. But this was before sunshine. I know, but I'm not experiencing it in that order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you how would you know what that's a good question bob how would you compare it to kessen i like kessen a lot more but you wow know, uh, I, i'm biased towards weird rts's sometimes uh you say that but you didn't like pikmin much <laughs> no not at all kessen is <laughs> so much better than pikmin it's kind of insulting to okay. compare all right bob let's take the temperature brutal legend i've not played it oh Apparently, we need to do a Kessin month and a Brutal Legend month. That's the <laughs> only we, way. Do we need a month for each? <laughs> no. Um, how many Kessin games were there? Because I think I actually only played Kessin 2. I think there are only three. I don't think I know what Kessin is. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Then we're doing it correctly. <laughs> oh, this shit. I've yeah, seen this shit. in Bob's house before. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. You've seen it at the Blockbuster. It was there when I wasn't renting it because early <laughs> PS2. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, it's neat. But. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that the framework set out by that game can sustainably fill 12 hours of gameplay. No, it feels like it's, it hardly fills the six that it is. Mm -hmm. And it probably shouldn't even do that. And... Yeah, I guess that's really... Um, one thing I do appreciate is the whole mansion is one, like, real 3D object that all connects properly. Yes. Which is good whenever they figure that out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Coming away from Luigi's Mansion 1, I don't have a whole lot to say about it because I played that at launch, like, 22 years ago. So... I don't have any weird epiphanies. I don't... You know, sometimes with these games, I realize a thing. Like, oh... I realized when they were making this, they were trying to make this. Mm -hmm. or, oh, I realized like this set out these tropes that later things would iterate on. What I'm trying to say is this is no kill switch. Yeah, this didn't define anything. It was just like, here's this thing we did. Uh, one thing I actually hate. Mm -hmm. uh, the second floor of the mansion mm -hmm. has no doors between one, each half of it. Like, it's literally got a divide in the yeah, middle where yeah. there's no doors. Yeah. And a ghost can sneak into there. So you then need to go downstairs and then back upstairs to the, get to that. Because the, the ghost can run away through a Harmony wall. of dissonance. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and it's just like... 
Okay, uh, guys. Man, that's okay. going to be Luigi's Mansion 4 where you have to go to the version of the mansion in the ghost dimension. It's okay, though, because in this one, Luigi can do the hyper dash like Juice Day. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can he do the knock knock? <laughs> King Boo's like, oh shit! What the fuck was that? Yeah, the, the, these Mario ghosts are not ready for Juice Day Bell. No, they're not. They're not. <laughs> Most things aren't, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> he just fists the door, stars through the castle. <laughs> yeah, the aura aura with the fisted wind. Yes, um, always good. At least, actually, no, it was just fist. Because fisted wind does the Hadoken. Oh, yeah. You just go. Poof. Anyway. Um, yeah, I guess that's it then. Luigi's Mansion has a lot of charm with the music and the humming. It we kept the music. We kept talking about playing the Ghostbusters game on PS3 and 360. And I was, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that game is pretty cool. Hey, yeah, you, that, that game good. is, in a, and it's released modernly now. It is. Hey, hey Agro, you, hmm. you you remember that episode of Dexter's Lab where Dexter's dad is like, didn't we have a talk about responsibility? <laughs> we, <laughs> we, 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 we. <laughs> Bob's corner in me. <laughs> I guess maybe yeah. our review of Luigi's Mansion as a franchise can't be complete without some sort of ghost busting <laughs> comparison. I just so don't. So it's time to. <laughs> oh no! I had a joke keyed up, and the title of this game left my mind. Tecmo's Deception? What was that seven that came out last year? Ikumi Nakamura worked on it and then got banished from the Ghostwire. Ghostwire. You were lucky God. that I remembered it because every time I've gone to think of that game, I'm like, Tokyo? <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you have become a GameStop customer. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> hey, you got that game? Tokyo? <laughs> It's such a terrible name. I don't know how they came out to whip with it. Uh, well, see, there's ghosts, right? Uh huh. Go on. And there's also these and, wires. And they need you to wire them some money. You see, these ghosts are all Nigerian princes, okay? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> it's about wiring ghosts. Not sure if you knew. Mm. Um, that's it. I'm done talking about Luigi's Mansion. I think it's really neat. I had a lot of hope for two. <laughs> I realized I realized 2 was really mid and that made it a staggering disappointment to me because new, Nintendo games are usually stellar and right. those are the people who make punch out on the Wii mm -hmm. I didn't know I didn't know but I hear Luigi's Mansion 3 is so good that 14 million people bought it I hear Luigi's Mansion 3 is the best selling horror game ever made <sighs> man even like 3DS um, Nintendo was really good yeah like just thinking about Kid Icarus, A Link Between Worlds, 3D Land. Yeah, those gonna, were all ton yeah. of fun. Yeah, so it's crazy that was so mid. Yeah, it was it was excruciatingly mid, is how it felt. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, like we were talking about, blowing up the image of a 3DS game to a full TV might help you see things, right? And Luigi's Mansion Two is definitely a game that would benefit from specifically that. Mm. That's great. <laughs> <sighs> when, are, when are they going to port Link Between Worlds to anything else? I don't know. Because that's a I really mean, good game. Nintendo likes to have... It feels like they like to have a Zelda thing every year, so it feels like eventually we'll get to that. Maybe. But first, Link's crossbow training. <laughs> Yo, if the <laughs> no. next, I'm like one of them's going to be excited. I'm not <laughs> excited to find out who it is. <laughs> Maybe... Maybe if Nintendo's next platform is VR, <laughs> Link's crossbow trading now becomes a 10 out of 10. Get like the white plastic crossbow you slot your Joy-Con into. <laughs> I have to relearn the controls and I can't look at my hands. <laughs> you got to get that I... manual of arms down. You can't be afforded to look at your weapon. You've got to know your weapon, yeah, love you, your weapon. You have to carnally, you need to have carnal knowledge Fuck of your this weapon. plastic crossbow. <laughs> Tears, Tears of the Kingdom was delayed into 2023, right? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to come out last year at some point. And then they're like, because I, because I'm just looking at the list of Zelda games, and I'm like, there's, there's been one every year of the Switch, but this one. Mm -hmm. If you, but 2022, I mean, if you include stuff like the Link's Awakening remake, Skyward Sword HD, um, 
Cadence of Hyrule. Hyrule Warrior, Cadence of Hyrule, Hyrule, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity, all that stuff. Mm. So they clearly like to have a Zelda thing every year. I feel like eventually we'll get to the point of, yeah, here's, here's, here's a link between worlds. Fucking, how about Wind Waker and Twilight Princess first, assholes? No. <laughs> right? <laughs> Those were ideal At least points Wind Waker. No, Wii U, the best console of all time. It's it's really fucking weird for me to say this because it's the first time I had this thought about Nintendo, but I feel like some of the times their game offerings, specifically what they do offer and don't offer, is like they want to carve a hole in your heart that they can later fill for too much money. <laughs> I am honestly starting to believe that the next Switch has some kind of batshit conductor <laughs> baton peripheral baked in, and that's what they're holding off Wind Waker for. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm going crazy trying to think of reasons that I cannot play Wind Waker on a modern uh, And it has to have the speakers so that way you're in public and it's going boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh we we played other video games though. We didn't just play Luigi's Mansion. That's true. We played Pistol Whip. Hey, Bob, you played Pistol Whip. Yeah. Hey. Pistol Whip's really cool. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> yeah, what a oh, mystery. Oh, wait. Is that everyone but Chris knew? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel bad for making that joke. I heard the Charlie Brown Christmas <laughs> oh, special no. sad song play. <laughs> the joke was funny until I heard doon, doon, doon. Doon, 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 doon. Um... <laughs> Well, playing Pistol Whip, it made me think of how cool it would be to have a game like that where you could also use your feet and like kick dudes. And that was, <laughs> and then I immediately realized that would cause the most damage, self injury ever uh -huh. in a VR game. Oh, yeah, we just damage. We'd period. Just, I would just oh, yeah. put a foot through that fucking entertainment center. Yes, we just we just get like a video of the on the very first week of like uh, <laughs> Jeff Gerstman just breaking his leg on a stool or something. <laughs> yeah, just like kicking full force into a stool and falling down. I, I think back to those giant arcade setups for Tekken where they have like the full body scanner and you uh -huh. have to do the moves yes mm -hmm. god i got to do that one time and the tracking was so fucked up i was trying to pick parong yeah because i i did take wando for years and it went one character over and picked eddie gordo <laughs> and i'm like oh I don't no know what... eddie gordo is the worst possible <laughs> character to have in this situation <laughs> i don't know where any of this shit activates my god <laughs> I got rinsed by a 15-year-old Asian kid. <laughs> hey, the DDR arcade experience for me growing up. People are like, you don't understand. Dan, you learned rhythm games in a conducive and safe environment. I'm like, <laughs> I learned against a 12-year-old girl beating my ass. I lost $2. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not a safe space. Wait, like, are you considering the money you spent on the game a loss? Or did she, like, mug you Pokemon <laughs> style after you lost? Emotionally, it felt like the latter. <laughs> Frankly. But, but you, 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 learned rhythm, you learned rhythm games in a safe space. I learned rhythm games from somebody picking max 300 <laughs> actually yes <laughs> she was uh she was really good and i'm just seeing my baby fucking steps and then her real ass steps and i'm like oh no it's like gotta it's, learn it's like you, you got you got to have value like eight like 18 of my 18 of your steps only add up to one of mine like we need like <laughs> one of us is clearly in the wrong and i don't think it's me <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you have an inflation problem over there. If one of my steps is worth 18 of yours, clearly my economy is the one that's doing well. It's like, uh, you, you got all these fucking diagonals. I don't have that shit. I'm on baby mode. Uh, Vox showed up to the stream where Bob was playing Pistol Whip for the first time ever because Luigi's Ooh. Mansion was so short. We just started playing Smash Melee. Did a couple runs of adventure Holy mode. Shit. Smash Melee so good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. You'll summon them. <laughs> and then we play pistol whip uh but vox shows up and she's losing it as bob is you know because people know about the rhythm is a part of the scoring mechanic oh no <laughs> bob didn't oh, give a shit no. those people were massacred right? <laughs> like, that's, i love that sometimes yeah. i'll start a level and just be like this one isn't for music <laughs> This one is for me. <laughs> yes. If I'm going for an hour straight, 
keep in mind at that point i burned about 400 or 500 calories depending i'm playing to survive it's not about scoring mechanics or rhythm or and no i'm unloading to get through Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was eight hours into a stream. I could hardly hear the music. I yeah. know I have a bad rhythm. So I'm like, these guys are dying. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> no, that was really good. That was a really good stream. Uh, I had a great time. I hope some of the people who saw Pistol Whip for the first time in that format got a little bit of why it's so fun and cool. Um, because currently Pistol Whip's my game of the year. I was convinced will, for a while change? that shooting downwards is how you reloaded like time crisis. Uh huh. But no, it's just the shake. Yeah, uh -huh. and from from the outside, I kept looking at Bob always having fourteen bullets in his gun before he's firing, and I go, "How's that happening?" I just, I, it didn't occur to me he's pulling the trigger while aiming it down because he did it so consistently. I'm like, how the fuck does he always have fourteen bullets? That doesn't make fucking sense. Um, yeah, that game's great. I really someday hope to have a PC VR headset so I could try the user created levels in mods. Mm. Um, because you can make someone out there right now could be making CVS bangers into <laughs> levels. <laughs> and I really, I need to play the Dolly Parton song that goes on fire as people jump out. I need that. Oh, well. Someday. Uh, did we play anything else? I think that was it on the Friday because yeah, we played we... some Street Fighter Six. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we yeah. got together with our famous friends. Ooh. You played, uh, we played we... melee. <laughs> uh, we we talked about melee, and then and then Agra was like, "Don't." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, want to stay safe." Uh, Street Fighter Six. We played a bunch of it. I should learn a character in that. Because I'm playing Ryu, which makes me the most readable human on Earth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 I said, I'm tempted to just be like, fuck it. I don't have anything else to do. With it. It's either this or learn about naval battles. So I guess I'll learn Guile. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That's way better than learning about naval battles. I mean, but, but if you ever want to go the other way, I've got... I've got some choice films. <laughs> See, I, I keep I keep thinking that my air my extremely niche area of history will learn be learning about the actual historical practice of witchcraft. <laughs> you might have some competition on that. I've, um, I've got some material I can say. <laughs> but yeah, Street Fighter Six is good. Yeah, I like how fast it loads for retries and everything else. It's a really enjoyable game. But really, I tried to spend most of my time playing uh, Final Fantasy 16. Oh, wait. It's time again. We rarely get to do this. It's time for... Game code provided by Square Enix. That's right, motherfuckers. We're shills. <laughs> we didn't pay shit I'm not, for that game. Yeah, Agron. I did. Agron Chris bought it with money. But for me and Bob... Game code provided by Square Enix. <laughs> yeah! That really needs like a lightning strike. Right? Yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> uh are we gonna talk about it now i feel like we're gonna talk about it now either that or let the other two talk about anything else they played first i'm gonna push the button one more time and then aggro can talk about it provided <laughs> by square enix hey aggro did you play anything other than final fantasy 16 yeah i mean i, I wrapped tears of the kingdom mm -hmm. uh last week mm -hmm. um in the the early part of the news segment during big think has has everybody beaten Tears of the Kingdom? Has everybody on the podcast beaten? Because I have, yes. Dan has. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, hit the spoiler thing. I want to say one thing about tier, the ending of Tears of the Kingdom. The ending. So if you oh haven't God. fucking beaten it, Oh, my it, God. One leave. moment. We're popping up with this, and I'm playing the music. Give me one second. Uh, we're going to play the music now as a preparatory thing. Uh, just... And then give me one more second to find where the... Oh my god, is that what it is? Yeah, oh yeah, it's Dragon Quest. <laughs> yeah. I, I just... I love Dragon Quest, you guys. <laughs> I need more opportunities to play Dragon Quest on this fucking channel. <laughs> I almost wrote Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Teats of the Kingdom. <laughs> That's going to be the Final Fantasy 16 DLC. <laughs> oh. where, it's where Clive gets the cow bikini. 
I have never had a game make my timeline hornier than Final Fantasy 16. And then, and then next to next to the image of Clive, there, there's just the old guy shrugging, but he has a milk mustache oh, and no. he's got <laughs> muscle milk in his hand. No, are, are you talking about tomes? <laughs> I mean, he was about talking a... about the literal meme image, but you know oh. what, sure, Tomes. <laughs> he basically is that same face model. Yeah, no, I get it. He's in the same anyways. Hey, Chris, what did you want to say about Tears of the Kingdom? Uh, I, I really like Tears of the Kingdom. I think the ending is good. It makes me irrationally upset that Link just got his arm back. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> yeah. That was it. I was just like, everything else was fine. I'm like, that's a little weird that it, he just gets it back. That's okay. Twitter Twitter art has convinced me it should have gone the other way and he should have just become an completely <laughs> ancient hero. Yes. He should, he should have gotten like half of Zelda's arm. <laughs> what if he had a dragon hand? <laughs> What if he was a man and then he was a dragon? So you're telling me that Link w w was a man? Yeah. Well, he was a dragon man. A dragon man. <laughs> or he could just be a dragon. Whatever, man. <laughs> but that's it, Chris. <laughs> yeah, that was all I had to say. <laughs> that's fucking unhinged, man. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, turning that off and then disappearing this. I like how I didn't ask anyone else if they wanted to say anything else. I'm, I'm like, nope, after no, that. That's, nope, that's, that's all we need. Nope, nope, we're good. <laughs> not, not you get to talk about. Uh, but... <laughs> Agro, did you, hmm? did you... Did you have some other game you wanted to talk about? Oh, right. I Because I, I, I finished Tears and then I, I went in to finish Octopath Traveler 2, which I did. Wow, Whoa. okay. Uh, yeah, it turns out um, I was beating my head against one of the hardest chapter ending bosses. So by the time I overcame it, I fucking melted the rest of that game. I figured that's how that game would go. It just was, with the way some of those chapters ended. It was disgusting. <laughs> like I like because I, I, I fought this boss like three times. I'm like, I'm just not survivable here. So I did a couple optional dungeons. I went and got like the rest of the god weapons for Arms Master. I picked up Arcanist and then I came back and like overcame it. I'm like, yeah, awesome. This is great. And every boss after that got to phase two. And I was like, cause, cause like the, the bosses are very well designed to where, you know, they're like, they know you're putting out about this much damage. So their phases and mechanics will go to where you'll probably kill them right here. And if not, they'll just start stomping you because you didn't beat it in time. Mm -hmm. So they'll like finish phase two and I'll do like my supercharge move and they'll just stop and now the dialogue starts. And it's like, I think there were two more of those, but okay, what? <laughs> there's um, there's a thing that that uh, Hikari gets. It's it's his last uh, support skill. Okay, where it moves the damage cap from nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine to 99,999. Yeah, you like being strong. You'll enjoy this. Oh, that, that's, that. some, that's some Final Fantasy X shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> so uh, at the end, like I, I picked Oswald for my first character and he, he maxed out all of his shit on two jobs. So I was just stalking JP and not doing anything with it. So I just subbed him into Warrior, bought all the shit, got that one thing, put it on him. And then I used his EX move, which is basically flare. <laughs> And I would just get to a boss, and I'd, I'd uh, boost three times to do Alifan's Wisdom, which made his spells into super spells. They would hit three times. And then I would wait for him to get three boost again, so I could three boost and do his latent power to focus all that onto one thing. And bosses would go away, because I'd be hitting them for, like, <laughs> instead of 9,999 damage, like, 23, 24k a hit. <laughs> You know, I saw Hikari himself was already broken with that oh, ability. Oh, he's also crazy. Because his, as you know, his limit break thing is completely busted. That's what got me through many chapter bosses. Oh, his arms master shit is better. What? Like, the, if you, the sword one, it's like called Cosmic Roar. Because they, they reroll initiative every turn. Mm. So uh, the, 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 the arms master sword special skill is you start charging. And then you act at the end of the turn. And the longer you charge, the more powerful the hit is. 
So you hit a boss that's weak to sword with that while they're broken, and he will easily do 23, 24K at, like, level 55. It's, it's nuts. <laughs> that's magic. It's Great. so good. Like, that game just keeps getting better the farther you get into it. It stacks more mechanics. The fights keep getting better. The bosses are more interesting. After you finish all the chapters, there's like the section after that, which is great. Cool. The final boss fight is fucking nuts. It's amazing. I need to get, I need to finish that this yeah. year. Octopath 2 is it. so fucking good, you guys. I'm so happy. <laughs> it's such a good <laughs> pixel art turn based JRPG. It's so good. This is such a fucked up good year for RPGs. It is. Because we got Super Mario RPG, Star Ocean 2, and then that. And, they're, and fucking Atlas is threatening me to re release a better version of Shin Megami Tensei 5 right? on the PlayStation 5. Yeah. And I'm like, Guys, I could only have one erection yeah. at a time. There's mm. no super position on my erection for me to fill that slot. It's just one motor. I started up Final Fantasy 16, and I'm now I'm sitting here thinking, I think I was like six side quests and two optional dungeons away from platting Octopath <laughs> Traveler 2. <laughs> Holy Ooh. shit. Ooh. The thought that you had that. Crawling because there's like there's this one dungeon where you can only enter it by putting eight people on a bridge, which means you have to have the four party members that can recruit people <laughs> go recruit people and walk them all onto this bridge, which collapses. What? That's incredible. Yeah, that's crazy. The game is so good. Its side quests are so good. Like I was thinking about it in the same vein of uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Because a lot of its side quests are like, hey, here's some information. Go figure it out. Not, here's the map marker. Walk to the map marker and press X. Mm -hmm. You're going to do a gameplay. Here's a video of the gameplay you are going to do. It's, it's kind of the same thing. Because Octopath 2's map is really not that big. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, like... Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm officially stopped. <laughs> My neck is starting to hurt. Right, it's like, 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 going to keep that up. <laughs> um... Like, there's only so many towns and so many NPCs that you can talk to. So a lot of times, like, you run into someone who would be like, Man, I sure love popcorn a whole lot! And Making then, like, fucking mouths! 20 <laughs> hours later, you'll be in some other town four chapters into the game, like, Man, if only I could find someone to eat this giant tub of popcorn. Like, <laughs> Do I know him? <laughs> I know where that guy is. <laughs> and so ends the tale of eating a shit ton of popcorn. <laughs> And then you get the epic triumphant music and quest line complete. Uh, let me tell you what you're going to love. Mm. Star Ocean 2. I have heard this my whole life. <laughs> A lot less politely and patiently than that. <laughs> <laughs> you got some aggressive GameStop the, employees crawling down your throat the, in 1998. <laughs> The best way I can describe Star Ocean 2 is that, like, every single thing in it sounds like you're that kid on the playground that just makes shit up. <laughs> uh, yes! No, it's like true! Every, like, there's so much shit in Star Ocean 2 that's like, no, fuck you, Bob. F not Bob, because Bob's actually here. Fuck you, Jim. <laughs> you can't get Luigi in Super Mario 64. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it literally sounds like a local kid lies about his favorite game to gaslight friends into playing it. No, I used the Game Shark and I got him. I got him. No, it's no, real. No, it's no, not fuck, just Mario, but well, what, do you, what do you mean you can pickpocket every single NPC in the world? Bullshit. You can't do that. That's yeah, that, not real. That game's remarkable. I genuinely hope they don't try to balance the remake. That would be the worst thing they could possibly I, do. I trust <laughs> that they, considering they made First Departure, which is them back backloading all that insane shit into the first game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think they understand. Yeah. What a good year. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, did you have any other games you want to talk about, Agro? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Uh, Chris, did you have anything you wanted to talk about other than Final Fantasy 16? Yes, I played this last week. I forgot to talk about it last week. I just forgot. Uh, I played like 10 hours of Rogue Legacy 2. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Because that oh, came out on uh, uh -huh. that came out on PlayStation. And if you if they successfully tricked you into buying their bucky wucky <laughs> PlayStation plus 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 triple plus tier if you, you just get it. Uh that's sure a lot fucking better than Rogue Legacy was. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Rogue Legacy sure feels like a weird primitive non-game in comparison to Rogue Legacy 2. Uh, it feels a hell of a lot better to control. You have more things you can do. Um... I feel it, I feel like we're getting to this point where roguelike elements will be slowly bled out of roguelikes until we just have normal games again, like the same thing yeah. that happened with Souls games and action games. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the second area of Rogue Legacy 2 is just a linear level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of that game that is just like, here is the ability to traverse thing. Here is a level, dumbass. <laughs> right? Wow. <laughs> People like action platformers in 2D? And, and not only that, like, it completely circumvents the thing where it's like, oh, I died on this boss. I got to go through all this shit and power up again to fight boss. Your power level stays pretty, like, you go into the castle on each run pretty much as strong as you'll end because your power comes from gear upgrades and stuff you buy in the town and that are permanent. Mm -hmm. And, and there are upgrades you can get. They're called, they're, they're basically like, they're almost like a, you have this thing called resolve, which uh, is you have resolve based on your weight limit, like your souls, like weight limit. And that's how many like power ups, the random power ups you can have. Hmm. They, they cost a certain amount of resolve. So if you have like no armor on, you have like 250 resolve. And the, the, the oh. gimmick is if you go under 100, your max health starts to go down. So you can take it down to like 50 or 40, but you'll lose like half your max health. Yeah. Huh. Which, some, which sometimes it's worth it. Some of them can be really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Specifically, like it, you have the capacity for, say, 250. If you spend over 150 of it, you'll start becoming encumbered and the encumbrance will, instead of making your mobility suck, which would be complicated to deal with in a 2D action platformer, they just start demeriting your health as a percentage. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, mm. it's um, uh, it's a really interesting system. They added a lot of really interesting systems. If people remember I, Game of the Year last year, I was very positive on this game. It's just this many years later, it wasn't as remarkable a moment for me as Rogue Legacy 1 was the moment it came out. But it's still a really great game, and people should check it out, especially if you got, as, as Chris said, duped into buying PlayStation Plus Plus. <laughs> Uh, it also it also t obviously takes a lot from Hollow Knight. That was the bit that was immediately what I felt because it has such a they have they add a bunch of reliance. They add a bunch of platforming mechanics, including a heavy reliance on an air dash that feels almost identical to Hollow Knight's air dash. Mm. And a lot of the platforming challenges they put in feel very similar to the ones in Hollow Knight, which makes sense. That sold an insane amount of copies for a game like that. They the didn't add in I, those awful Souls-like elements for Hollow Knight where it's like, uh, you got hit by a rock that shelves from the ceiling you couldn't possibly see unless you've done this fall away before. No. No, there's not okay. really anything like okay. that. Um, uh, I've certainly gotten a lot further in this one because I think I beat the first boss of Rogue Legacy 1 and I'm like, okay, I've had enough. But in this, I've already beaten three. Yeah, that's about how far I got. Yeah. Before I went, this isn't on my top 10. I have to put it down. Uh, magic that the, the classes are now better. Mages are really good. Mm -hmm. You unlock you unlock a mage class called the astrologist. Astrologist, and the way classes work in this is they all have a technique, which is unique to the class. And then you have a spell which is randomly pulled, and you can swap both at certain places inside the inside the castle. The astrologist's technique is you're invincible and can fly for five seconds. <laughs> you have eight way flight and can and are cannot be harmed now yes please i'm not sure if you realize that could be really helpful <laughs> <laughs> what? No yeah way. that's real that's, that's really helpful when you get to one of those rooms that is like uh navigate this complicated platforming challenge for a special chest if you get hurt the chest breaks and you can't mm, yep. open it but i'm like well, i'll just turn on i'll just fly to it while invincible okay so that's one use case in which flying and being invincible is useful <laughs> can you think of any other plays <laughs> infomercial transition music <laughs> Boo -doo 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 -doo. i have to eat this giant bowl of cheese puffs <laughs> i i also think i also kind of think weirdly they they took some inspiration from cuphead because mm. you have this thing called a spin kick and yes. basically what it is is it's a thing that will bounce off mm. enemies or obstacles and you get enough, you get height. Mm -hmm. And bosses love throwing projectiles you can bounce off of at you. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. In the a way f- that feels very similar to the things you could parry in, in Cuphead and bounce off them. Yeah. In the first game, that mechanic was there, but it was a downward stab a la Zelda 2. So mm-hmm. it is much less easy to execute, but still there. So them changing it into that spin attack of this is vastly more pliable and mm-hmm. able to be used in numerous different situations. Uh, I, I guess I should say this because it's the... Uh, Hey, we did a review on, on, on Rogue Legacy 1. You can go watch that. I got the platinum. <laughs> like threefold or something. Anyway. That's about all I have to say on it since I haven't beaten it. It's much better. I probably will go back to it when I get time. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying maybe uh, Rogue Legacy 2 would have ended up on my game of the year list last year if it shipped on the Vita. <laughs> also, if it had been actually out by then. <laughs> It was out. It was out for real. <laughs> Xbox doesn't was count. Was it? <laughs> Xbox counts. Okay, I, I thought it hadn't actually come out of early access no. until this release. No, it was out on Xbox, PC, and was it out on Switch even I then? Don't because think... it, oh, wow. it came out on Switch before PlayStation 5. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. But it wasn't out on Vita. <laughs> That's the important thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I also... <laughs> yes. I also played uh, one other thing. Hmm. I played um, Mega Man ZX Advent. Mm, yes. So I have now completed all of Inti Create's actual Mega Man games. Wow. Wow. There's still no combat rooms. What? Yeah. So is, does that start with Mighty Number no. 9 or Azure Striker? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to have to find out when I go to Azure Striker, but I'm not going to fucking Azure Striker first. We're doing Blaster <laughs> Master before then. I don't want to be like, okay, I ate Mega Man Zero and ZX. Now time to play that, but worse. Right. Why not? (laughs) Uh, This is a bigger game than ZX. For the first ZX, like it has more levels. And they probably shouldn't have because the back, the back like 30% of that game sure has a lot of enemy hallway. Enemy hallway. Or it's like, I'm not really doing much, but going through this totally linear path and killing enemies. Uh, so the plot of ZX Advent is, um, whatever character you pick and there's a boy or a girl, I picked the girl because she, she deals more damage. Her damage stat was higher. Uh, and you get, you find the, uh, Biometal Model A, uh, which I was shocked to learn, even though it looks like, sounds like, and has the exact same abilities as Axel, is not Axel. Axel isn't canon. (laughs) <laughs> Mega Man X 6, 7, and 8 ignore the space colony Eurasia falling and destroying the world which is the explicit backstory of Zero and ZX is that they follow from the end of X5 where that happens mm-hmm. Zero seals himself in the pod and the world is destroyed pretty much but then they did more Yeah, and they, they couldn't figure out how to square the circle so at some point in development they were like it has to be something else. It can't just, it can't be Axel. Which I think is very funny. It's what he deserves. <laughs> it is very funny. It's going to uh, be so, really so, weird when Mega Man X9 is canon to the Zero series. <laughs> it's been up six, six, seven, or eight. Because <laughs> Axel so, will disappear. <laughs> so Axel's power is that he can absorb shit from enemies and turn into them in... Mega Man X7, this means you can turn into regular enemies sometimes and it's really shitty and sucks. Um, in this one, it means when you beat a boss, you can just turn into that boss. Mm-hmm. Which is cooler in theory, but uh, a lot of them are like really limited use Metroidvania power-ups. I mean, where it's that... like, you can, like you can use this to get to here. You can use this to get to here. I feel like that's and... the way that sort of thing would have to go is how much bigger their sprites are. At least from what I saw. You can find insane people who are like, I beat every boss with uh, the gigantic screen filling guy who has like two moves. <laughs> it is also really funny that one of them can, one of their powers is just to freeze time. But it only slows enemies, but you can really clown on bosses with that. The downside is, is, is uh, it's a, it's a, it's a turtle. Like it's not a turtle. It's like a, um, 
It's a manta ray, not a manta ray. Damn it! What's the thing that killed? <laughs> uh, thing? <laughs> what's the thing that killed? A stingray. Steve Irwin. A stingray. It's a stingray. So it can't move on land at all. Oh. If you turn if if you turn into it on land, you just lay there. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, you get all eight bosses, and then you get the four other Mega Men based on the Guardians of from Zero, and then you get a uh, ZX. You see X form from the previous game when the when the main character of that shows up for a little bit. You copy their ability. Uh. This is officially the point where where an NT Creates game has too many words. I'm surprised that only now, because I remember booting up the Zero games and every one of them started with too many words. The, they're voice acted now. So okay. they last longer. Okay. And, and this is really the point where, and somebody said Bob said this, and I have no idea when Bob said this. It must have been a stream or something where every NT Creates game is about the power. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to get the power and stop the other guy from getting the power because he wants the power and he's going to do something bad with the power. This time it was literal. I check into Chris's stream and that's all I can figure out about the plot. I'm like, they're playing the power games to see who gets the power. You want the power, but that guy doesn't. But this guy does. <laughs> yeah, the plot of this game, and this is what this is why last week I said that Mega Man ZX works more as like the turn A Gundam of Mega Man. You meet uh, the leaders of this country called the Sage Trinity, and they are Master Albert, Thomas, and, and Mikhail, because they are explicitly based on, not visually, but in terms of, like, their role, they are based on Wiley, Light, and Cossack. Oh, Cossack, okay. I was like, I'm following <laughs> half of this? Where's the <laughs> fucking last? Oh. So, so fucking surprise, the Wiley, one, the Wiley guy's evil. What? No uh, way. Why? It, it's it's not it's not model A, it's model Albert because it was based on him. That's how they get away from uh it being Axel. Mm, okay. That's a pretty good escape shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh so, so he so he wanted to use the the power to reboot the world? That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to reboot the world. It was want. like a, yeah, and then um, and then if you beat the game, that's all women want. Uh, and then if you and then if you beat the game, if you beat the game on hard mode, you get the secret ending that reveals that Master Thomas, the light one, is also evil and also wants to reboot the world, but in a different way than Albert wanted to reboot the world. Is this freaking Shin Megami Tensei now? <laughs> uh, and, and and then and then that's never resolved because the third game, Mega Man ZXC. Was never never came out. Just, Honestly, oh. I think Capcom should let him make it. Just be like, yeah, make it on the same scale as Ozzy Striker Gun Volt Three or whatever. We don't have to develop it internally. All our teams are covered up doing other shit. Sure, fine, whatever. Fucking go ahead. All I can imagine is the main character fucking ZX talking to uh, Albert and it's just playing the fucking Shibagami Tensei Five talking themes. It's like. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how that plot is framed, where it's like the Mega Men are all fighting in the Mega Man Wars to, uh, yeah, to, the power because, wars to get the power. Because if you become the Mega Man, you get to decide how the universe, how the world's yeah, going to be rebooted. Yeah, that's an FMT game. That's all that is. Oh, <laughs> That's great. Yeah, no, I, I I agree, Chris. They should just let them like the maybe they should just let them keep going. At the same time, they. Uh, I'm pretty sure Capcom sent into creates his excommunicado. So I don't know. Apparently yeah, not. Apparently not. Apparently like people when they were making, and this was somebody in chat saying is like, yeah, when they were making 11, people were making 11. It was like, yeah, we like those games and those guys. And NT creates CEO just recently was like, yeah, if, if Capcom wanted us to, we'd love to go back and make more things. So it seems more like this. They never did. And, and, and also this collection sold really, really badly. <sighs> Oh, that's rough. That is rough. That's like, rough. I'm like, not a fan of those games, but come on. Yeah, that like it's the worst. You, like it was fans, apparently the. I feel so it was bad apparently for you the, because it's like the fucking Battle Network fans are the same platform, and they're like ten more billion copies, right? <sighs> maybe maybe if the Zero games weren't hadn't been by default ball crushingly difficult, they would have had a higher like attach rate. Yeah, I yeah. don't know what they were thinking. Like that's uh, honestly what scared me away. In, like, in, well, the, the thing that the thing about NT Creates that I figured out, and it's why I'm probably going to be less harsh on them in the future, is 
they're a Dojin, they're a Dojin game studio. Like that's that's what they are basically. They got really lucky and got to make a bunch of Mega Man games. But then you look at all their other output and it's like, yeah, it's just the anime they're watching. It's the, it's, it's like that's just what it is. Like the guy who made Mega Mari or whatever, the mm. Toho fan game. Like it, they're just those guys. They're just little guys. <laughs> and in fact, I feel like I feel like news <clears throat> this week is like completing their transformation into like an almost team ladybug type studio mm. where they they're going to make weird licensed games going forward uh but yeah those are the only things i played other than 16 Pablo? <laughs> <laughs> why is it oh right that's set to fade out i'm like motherfucker i told you to stop playing that song what are you doing <laughs> well <clears throat> Thank you very much for listening to this. <laughs> this is a big thing. <laughs> We're going to talk about Final Fantasy 16 with very light spoilers because I'm about halfway done. Bob is completely done. Agro is two hours done. <laughs> They're about like I'm, I'm so not into this game that I don't know if light spoilers means spoilers that are light or spoilers about the light. We're going to talk about the light. Agro, did you bring a book? The Warriors of Spoilers. <laughs> uh, Chris, how do I even ask this question? We talked about it before we went live, and my brain dumped the information out for us. Let's talk about how. Yeah. Yeah. He's let's about talk, as far as me. Let's. Okay, did you get to the part where it becomes Metal Gear Rising 2? Yeah, I got to the part where it's Ashura's Wrath. Yeah, Bob, okay. You had a different game, you also. Uh, those are literally things from Bayonetta 2. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know where we were. <laughs> There's a dog. <laughs> That's true. Um, Final Fantasy 16 is a video game. Wait, oh wait, shit! I can't talk about it without hitting. Game code provided by Square <laughs> Enix. I feel like I need to make that louder. <laughs> is that what you feel like? Oh yes, that is. I mean, it was pretty quiet. <laughs> just, I need just... to make sure Square is satisfied by the volume. As a baseline. Game code provided by Square Enix. As a baseline, <laughs> uh -huh. real quick, um, you all have the trophy for petting Torgal five times, right? I, I don't, because I didn't know I could do that for a while, because I would see, the, I because I run around real fast, so I would see the prompt pop up and be like, well, I don't know what that is. I feel like I pet him five times, but... I, I, I think I only pet him like three times. Through the whole yeah, case? I haven't yeah I haven't pet him enough yet. Occasionally, occasionally I'm like Torgal must be thirsty. It's really dry here. Torgal, you're so dry. <laughs> and then I'll pet him. I I got that trophy after my fifth <laughs> fight involving Torgal. You know how I know? How because do you know? Because every time the fight's over, I pet that fucking dog. You monster. I'm sorry. Bob, didn't we have a talk about responsibility? <laughs> Who is this we? <laughs> Yeah, Torgal's pretty cool. He is a cool dog. Uh, hey, Agro, you're only like two hours in. They're about. Torgal's a cool dog. Yep. Yeah, it seems like you just barely passed the demo, basically. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm... That, 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 yeah. At that point, yeah. Like, I, I finished Octopath this morning uh -huh. and played uh -huh. as much 16 as <laughs> I could before I came over here. Wow, yeah. I do. You know, you know, you know what's funny? Uh. On, on New Game Plus, it lets you skip the demo. It's like all the content that's the demo, it's like start after it. Thank God. <laughs> oh, that's so good. A couple games do do that. If you do New Game Plus on Tales of Graces F, there's like a five, out, five six hour long, might even be longer, might even be fucking 10 hours, like opening segment of that game. Just like skip it. You can skip it if you want. Uh, let's start with Chris. Hey, Chris, you, you got some words about Final Fantasy 16? Uh, Final Fantasy 16 is really cool. It, in fact, every new thing that I, every new boss fight I get to, I'm like, how'd they make something this cool? I'm really glad it's cool. 
<laughs> that was my biggest fear is that because they played they played up like the Witcher shit so much in pre-release materials and played up the like we it, are, it, it's a more grounded fantasy uh, shit so much that I was worried that like okay is this gonna be like is it is it really just gonna be like yeah there's there's these big icon battles but other than that it's just mostly like mm. kind of like the Witcher and I'm really glad it's fucking not. Mm. Uh, I really like the combat and the boss fights. I think I think you could use more than one combo for the basic weapon. Yeah. Like that, that, yeah. That's my biggest complaint. I'd like a pause combo, but those seem to have fallen out of fashion in action games. Oh, um, did they? I don't think so. I feel like, like DMC oh, has it. them, and the new God of Wars have like a weird version where you switch into a different stance. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how it helps communicate, you know, the concept of a pause combo. Yes, you know, to some people that might seem unnatural if you don't have a visual signifier of like, oh, you've paused long enough to do this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I've found some, I've found some absolutely fucking goofy uh, interconnectivity between the things you can do. Uh, here's a mechanic spoiler that isn't obvious, and I don't think they tell you. Um, if you master one of the Akon moves, one of your cooldown moves. That's what lets you put it on any of the power yeah, they, sets. They tell yeah, you they that. Sell them, yeah. yeah, that's the details. Okay, it does. Because okay. that's the only thing mastering it does. Cause, cause, right. And that's the thing. I've been looking at every one of those icon powers and being like, oh, you're just maxed. Like on paper, you're technically maxed already. Mm -hmm. Mastering you will just let me put you on other shit. So, which I did So you do. can mix and match yes. from different... Yes. Wow, that's... Which, which helped me go, you are really great. We're just going to take you out of counter. that move set and stick So instead you in... of having like, this is the this one and this is the this one, you just have a certain number it's of like you just have you can switch between. Kind of, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You can also switch around the circle button. Like, yeah, that that's, that's, that's for feet. each one. Right. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate because uh, you get one that is a wind based thing where you can yank shit. Yeah. And it feels bad and whenever you start not putting that in your rotation. Like, that has to be there. Literally, it has to. Like, that that feels like such oh, a cool part of the mechanics. I, I took it off and haven't had any problem. Like, I the biggest problem too. with taking it off. It, it, the, the problem it burns through uh, stun gauges so fast. So much faster. Yeah. Like, I just can't the, remove it. The. 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 the the pull? Yeah, because it once you hit the halfway mark on the pull, you pull them yeah, down. You can pull yeah, you can them pull down. them down. Yeah. And well, that puts well, them on their knee. And then they, they just will eat an entire combo of a right. Sager knockoff. Uh, uh, okay, this is but, exactly okay, but, uh, what I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. That like okay, but you didn't use this move. This is the only move that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, I get yes. it. And like I I swapped it out for a thing that's Royal Guard, basically. You would. Because no, it has like a perfect counter, so it was really good. And I hate that move like because it, does, it shoves the camera so far in his elbow, I can't see anything happening anymore. <laughs> that is see, true. I, I've uh, had that happen a lot since I started doing that. Yeah. I, I I bought the accessory that gives you that gives you a free couple seconds of being in limit break mode whenever you dodge. Oh yeah, the berserker ring or whatever. Yeah, I, I yeah. used that for a little while and then I turned it off because it turns off the precision uh, counter attack. Hmm. And then you have to deal with that, like the the, the dash the, and the whoosh, the whoosh and stuff, and it's like. Not not that add that much damage, or it makes it less viewable. It, it, it <laughs> yeah, does I... make the camera jump a lot, but that is a permanent fixture on my character at this point. I've been using it since the second I got it because mm -hmm. it's. I've just... been consider. I've been considering taking it off. I've also been because. I, so I found this. I found this accessory. Hit, accessory that uh, what, have you got? Have you did any of you guys buy uh, Clive's Mega Man Barrier? No, I saw. Where you summon it, the fireballs, like... right? Uh, that's really good if you have the accessory that makes it last five seconds longer, because that means it lasts 80% of its cooldown time. Yeah, it does last a really long time that way, and that does help build stagger really fast. Um, especially, if you, especially if you get the lightning orb that pulses whenever it is hit by anything. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can basically set up an, like an Aegis reflector combo on guys and be like, <laughs> I'm going to summon my, my barrier and put the ball on you. Yeah. And then I just stand on top of them and they bleed out instantly. <laughs> Man, they sure put like every mechanic from any Square Enix game into this. I didn't think one of the icon abilities would just be a shot lock. I did think it was very funny when people were like, the Kingdom Hearts team helped them with this shot -like, lock like mechanic. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> I can look at footage of this and tell that. 
It I is. really liked Story when in the, the in the interviews they were like, oh, yeah, a big inspiration was Attack on Titan. And I'm like, oh, you mean beyond just big things fighting? Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they, that Garuda fight is almost one to one shot for shot at Attack on Titan fight. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't in the live action movie. No, I'm of course sorry, not. Nothing so I don't was. know. <laughs> I, I read the manga. I read the manga, so I don't even know. I don't even know from that angle. I'm just like. There's just a lot of points where it's like, this sure is exactly a thing that was an attack on Titan. Mm -hmm. also, also, Titan just looks like the armor Titan. A little bit, yeah. There is one really important question, but I don't want to pose the question to give Agro the knowledge that he may himself want to roll around in when he hits a part in the story. I think he's slightly before. Um, so I'll ignore that. Uh, I want to talk about what this game is compositionally, not music composition, but like content. Because like I structurally. It, yeah, like, like, because I didn't really watch any of the pre-release coverage because I just don't wanted worry, they to didn't get tell the game. you what it was like. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I didn't fucking know. They sure didn't show you shit. And even the demo isn't a good indicator. No, the I demo mean, the demo's is, really bad at it. The demos, because if the game was nothing but what the demo is, it's almost like, because the way I view those segments, it almost feels like if Naughty Dog made a Square Enix game, where it's a really cool hyper linear set piece mm -hmm. where you're crouching under a thing and you're going through an area and there's really cool things happening. You're sneaking up on dudes. They're saying some stuff and running off. Very scripted, very neat. That's like, that's part of the game. Yes, but that's a large part of the game is you traveling across an entire continent that's the size of Niceville. <laughs> and it'll be narrow area, narrow, uh, narrow area, field in the narrow area, and it'll take you in between towns. And there are sort of like, once again, haven't played Final Fantasy 14, but almost MMO like side quests and side missions that are optional for you to go do where somebody will just tell you a quick story through almost Horizon Zero Dawn like facial procedural animation stuff. Like you see in a lot of games where they have too many cutscenes. Mm -hmm. for them to handcraft each one, right? Mm -hmm. They build systems to do it automatically. They'll say something like a mild backstory that is either interesting or the least interesting thing on the face of the planet. I've only found that one. <laughs> <laughs> you go somewhere else, you pick up dirt, either literally or figuratively, sometimes literally. Yeah, very frequently, literally. <laughs> literally picking up dirt and then you bring it back and then they tell you a conclusion to the story and you either do or do not fight a big monster in between or a set of monsters in between. And then they tell you their interesting story or uninteresting story. So that is like, the game is jackknifing between these two things in a really bizarre way I couldn't have anticipated before launch. Like based on the demo, I'm like, is this game 16 hours long? <laughs> because you cannot do that level of budget for 40 hours. No. Uh -huh. um, no. You yeah, so so this has been really interesting, especially when it goes from a cutscene that's Sony Visual Arts Group quality of insane facial animation and all this mocap stuff and absolutely insane things that get you banned in Saudi Arabia <laughs> to a cutscene immediately with the same characters just going, uh, and almost like, yeah, it's, it's like the Yakuza effect. Yes, yes. <laughs> It's like, really that's the thing that thin. reminds me of it of the most, especially because a lot of the cutscenes are like, somebody will tell Clive the most insane thing you've ever heard in your life. And Clive will just be like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah everyone in those cutscenes having the thousand yard stare out to nowhere is really disturbing. It's, I mean, it is because they're also telling you a sentence that's like, that's earth shattering. What the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> and they say it like, they're not even thinking about that. They're thinking about the fact they left the microwave on with a fucking hungry man inside. <laughs> it's also real, like another funny thing, like a comparison point to Yakuza is some of these side quests will be structured almost identically to a Yakuza side quest. But instead of at the end where you beat the guys up, instead of them being all hunched over going, sorry, so they're just dead. Clive just killed them. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what, the first fight when you, um, fight the uh your, your sister the shiva dominant mm -hmm. and like right off screen like it's fucking pulp fiction clive just beheads a guy i was like wow it's a fantasy game where swords are 
Swords. They cut things sometimes, <laughs> yeah. It's true. It is funny that once in a while, it is it has only happened, I think, twice, and once was in the main story. Instead of saying enemies slain, it says enemies bested to yeah. indicate that Clive uh -huh. did not murder them. Yeah, that really stood out to me. And I'm like, wait, has it been doing this this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to push the button again so people who are audio listeners know we're still in the 16th second. Um, but yeah, I, I then paid more attention to that from that point forward and it hasn't happened again. Yeah, I, I, like, I, I feel like it only happens once. That once, yeah. I do, I do it, love It happened this. in one other side quest, I'm pretty sure. The, the side quests I've done, both of them that I've done so the two far. two of them, yeah. It's because I've heard, you know, people say like, oh, this game is this action game or this action game. Or people have said, this game is just Final Fantasy XIV. And I'm like, okay. And I, I get to the hideout and some guy's like, go deliver these three plates of food. And some other guy's like, bring me wood from 10 feet away. I'm like, they're right. This is Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> oh, that's it's rough. weird because the, the further you get into the game, like the more involved the side quests become. I don't understand why that's the case. It was but like... they become more interesting and more widely involved in the things you're doing. The further in the game you get, it's weird. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were definitely like tutorial side quests which reminded me of like your first hour of Final Fantasy 14 where they're like this is a massively multiplayer online role playing game please grasp your mouse with your right hand and click in the game window area <laughs> uh if I could go to me before playing this game and say one thing about it to prep me for it it was the earlier thing I was talking about about the content like what it's comprised of. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, this really, really is leaning into an action game mechanically, and it is RPG light. Like I think there are more RPG systems and depth in Kingdom Hearts. I, this is, the yeah, some of the least RPG elements I've played in any action RPG. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, I like, it, it. I would still say this is an RPG, but it definitely leans more into like, um, like I would think of like East Nine, where it's like you really don't have puzzles or anything. You just unlock levels and go do these action game levels, and you have stats. Yeah, because and cooldown moves. In this, like talking about the depth behind the scenes, stat wise, I'm I'm level thirty six, and every single level has been you get fifty health and three points in every stat, except for when you get two sometimes. So there's no curve on your leveling power. No. Um, no. The equipment is three pieces of equipment. I think it's your sword, your armor, and then a bracelet. And it's then you your get sword, three your belt, and your bracelet. Belt. Okay. Whatever. I'm just mistranslated harmony of dissonance here. <laughs> um, so you can take materials and things you get from side missions or hunts for rare creatures, which have the bayonetta pop art. Art. Yes, they do. It is exactly like, like yes. that. It's very Here's funny. Here's the fucking soul stingers. It's <laughs> like this is the Bible shot from Bayonetta. And, and, and it even I starts. The, it. it even starts the music like at the exact right yes. part of it. And I was floored by how one to one it was on that. That was so funny. Uh, but you get materials from those situations to go and craft at a blacksmith or whatever. Your equipment. So I think behind the scenes, your accessories can list some stats. Uh, I have some that lift attack, some that lift defense, some that make potions more potent, like any consumable. Yeah. And then almost all the rest of them are either a percentage upgrade to the specific damage of a specific skill or a cooldown upgrade to specific skills. So behind the scenes, there's not, it's not a ton of RPG depth, like, as I just said, I feel like Kingdom Hearts has more going on behind the scenes. In Rust, I feel like more of the RPG thing comes from how are you going to use your six move slots to build synergy? Because there is synergy. There is lots of different things you can do for synergy. Like, um, mm -hmm. like Garuda has the move where you spin up into the air and take guys. And then Titan has the move that deals more damage the higher up you are when you use it. Yeah. And so that that and then there's the synergy I talked about with the lightning ball and the and the armor and the flame barrier. Mm -hmm. So that it feels like that's more where it's trying to go. Where your you know your build is what Akon feats do you want to have and what powers do you want to have attached to them and what points you put into which skills to upgrade them further to make them do more damage. I just don't see that as meaningfully different from an action game. Right. That's a lot more like what you unlock in action games and also. 
that whole thing where you can only have so many things equipped. You can only have it's like, two per. Yeah, two per icon and three icons. Yeah. So that's six abilities that uh -huh. you have. Yeah. Once and you've upgraded six abilities, you can then unupgrade them if you're going to switch to something else because all the points right. are interchangeable. Uh huh. So after like probably 10 hours or so into the game, I open that menu when I get a new icon and then close it forever. <laughs> like I things start I've, to cost so much that I I did that too. Yeah, I hit an icon and I'm like, I don't have two thousand points. I don't have shit. But yeah, to do I just either. have like five thousand plus points sitting around doing nothing because it's like I can't equip any more abilities. And if I if I That's want to try something, I just take one off and put one on. Because yeah, to someone who hasn't played this game at all, you have two investment levels: upgrading it, which legitimately makes your skill or whatever better, and then mastering it, which lets you bring it over to other shit. Mm -hmm. um, the only things that aren't like that are Clive's core set of abilities, which is a different ring that you can select from uh yeah that's that's basically lined up with my experience too uh as as a person who likes rpgs and action rpgs there's something deeply frustrating about you gained a level your gear is really where all your shit's gonna come from bro and i'm like i, I like power leveling too much this hurts and there's also a giant yeah, you can't really the power level where, so either. It's like there's no new gear either there's nothing to craft go away i did i did go a huge i thought I did a lot of the side missions hoping I would get a thing to allow me to craft a thing. Mm -hmm. Cause once again, all your all your sick gains are coming from the gear. Yeah. So I did go do like every hunt, every side mission. I was hoping to craft something new and nothing popped up, but I was like Are you yeah, are you doing, doing the are you doing the plus mark quest? Because yeah, some of those I did do literally give, everything in the game. They they do give you yeah, like new my recipes. Sword, my sword from doing the main story was already better than that. There, my most recent weapon is one I just fucking bought and couldn't even upgrade from there for some reason. Yeah, it also is really weird that you can only upgrade things to plus two on anything. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that yet. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It, Which it, maybe I that unlocks that. in in like new, new game. game plus yeah, or something. Maybe, maybe. It, it, is, it is weird. Items. It is bizarre how many how much of crafting materials they dump on you when there is nothing to make with them. Awesome. I kept expecting to be given like a base building mechanic where it's like, oh, well, this character will need like 50 of, of this mm -hmm. thing that we keep handing you. Like the, every time I pick up a thing, it's like uh, steel silk. Like I have like 80 of those. I'm like, nothing uses it really. Yeah, no, yeah. it's true. It's, I have a ton of that material and a couple others too. It's the same thing with like gill. Like there's literally right, nothing I have 160,000 gill, and it's like like I could that, I could renew my potions, and, but that's like it. Yeah, and I was gonna I was gonna point out that sword that I bought that was somehow better than anything I could craft and non upgradable because I didn't have the correct things to upgrade. It was only about 2,500 gold. Yeah. The 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 gold economy in this game is the weirdest thing. Like that yeah. and the experience economy. But once again, the That's... experience economy is moot because gaining a level, you know, 50 HP isn't really doing a lot. Neither is three points of attack. Mm -hmm. uh, and the story mode stuff is going to give you like a ton, especially for the first 20 hours. Like the story mode gives you so much more than the story missions give you so much more than just trying to grind or do anything. Yeah, like that grinding would. is you can't grind at all. This isn't. A, yeah. Don't try to grind this game. That doesn't make any sense. In you you can get ahead of the curve if you do the hunts because the hunts will give you a shitload of experience, yeah. especially if your dick is big and you're like, yeah, I killed the thing that was 11 levels above me. Yeah, mm. about that. Uh, I did want to get in the story for saying so. Thank you for saying that. I'm looking up locations on Prime Hunts, right? And it's like, this is where this guy is. You're going to want to be level 46. And I'm like, oh, thank you, internet guide. I haven't had the experience of, no, Traveler, you're too weak to beat the boss in this action RPG since Kingdom Hearts 1. <laughs> where the strategy guide's like, you got to be level 65. There's no way you can take him. I'm like, what if I got cut? <laughs> right. Yeah, what if I... <laughs> Yeah, what if I just dodge? Yeah, right. It's like it's not exactly hard to dodge in this game. You're right. No, in fact, with the Berserker Ring is insanely generous. That is absurd. I'm like, there's it an is... okay, R1. <laughs> speaking of speaking of dodging, it is just really there are things where it's like you're literally phasing through solid things with your iframes. And while that is true of any game where your dodge has iframes. There are parts in boss fights in this where it's like, 
Clive's superpower is that he has iframes on his dodge oh, and can avoid this. <laughs> I was telling Bob, I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, also a proponent of games where you get iframes from dodges. I'm not a fan of the God of War, like, one, where yeah. it's just like, you get none. Fuck you. The dodge button is to move your character out of the fucking way. Um, but in this, it's literally, I'm inside of the tentacle storm that is this boss that I hit R1. And then I'm just good until his tantrum calms down. Uh, yeah. So far, I am enjoying the game. Um, there are a few really good songs. Uh, I spent this whole thing going, people said Silken made this composition. I'm not buying that Silken's the composer. 18 hours I was in this mode. I'm like, these are some good songs I could see Silken making. Yeah, and then you get but, that one. Hey. Where's the Silken trademark of? And then Dragula, fucking Dragula kicks in. And I fucking lose it because I'm like, that is funny as shit. You waited 20 hours to be like, hey, what? Rob Zombie, can I borrow that? Bro, thank you. <laughs> you using it? I don't so think you're going to eat that. So many songs for this game, he didn't remember. He was like, yeah, I made 200. And somebody was like, you made over 300. He's like, oh. Uh, I also like how the desert has the theme a la Lawrence of Arabia as played on a 70s keyboard. Like an old, like, analog synth. That is fucking hilarious to me for some reason. They're just like, here's the cool jazz music. You're in the lobby. And I'm like, damn. The desert's so soothing. <laughs> I, I really like the second hideout song. That's like maybe my favorite it's, song in the game yeah, so far. Yeah, I think, I think those three songs, the ones we just mentioned, are my three favorite songs in the entire game. Because so they're... far. I don't know what kind <laughs> right. of shit they're going to pull when I fight certain characters I'm sure I'm going to fight. Yeah. Uh, Bob. Yeah. What's up? Go ahead. I know you have something you probably want to talk about. Yeah, I don't know. We already covered a lot of things. I think that the combat's too simple feeling. Like, I don't have enough options for a game this long. Like, it just it felt like it got really old a lot because of the combat loop with the stagger mechanic makes it makes me feel like there's only one direction to go in a lot of it, the cases. It does feel like it's it feels like it would help a lot if it was a little bit less cheesecake, which hopefully mm -hmm. like the, the ga new game plus stuff will will do like I get it. You I had to make, this is an action, the first action game in the turn-based franchise. You have to make sure those people can beat this. I understand it. I yeah, fucking get it. And it's not even so much that it's easy. It's just, I feel like I don't have a lot to, like once I hit a staggered enemy, I'm like, well, now I better hit out these three things because these are the most damaging things I right, have. Like right, I, yeah. I have every single on a cooldown so I don't get to just have fun with these abilities. I have to save them for that. Yeah, you're literally scheduling your cooldown skills, knowing how long it's going to take them to stagger so that way they've cooled down in time for the stagger. And if your ability can't do both, you probably aren't rolling it out ahead of that. Right. Right, yeah. And, that's and... that's what my experience is too, where it's like certain enemies, depending, I can roll out my full set of skills twice and then, but some of them are the longer ones, you know, mm -hmm. sick lightning ability or whatever. And it's like, I don't want to use that past the first time at the very opening of the fight. Exactly. And and I, I wish changing your icon changed more of your basic move set because it's really yeah. annoying that yes, everyone I has agree. the basic shot i'm like just I, make I, him give me a machine gun or something else on that yeah make i 100 yeah. wish that the that your no, basic that. spell was different that would have that would have helped a lot like it didn't even it doesn't even have to change that much like like functionally it can just be like okay Fire is a fireball, but lightning is like a shorter range shotgun type effect. It could even be something as simple as that. That would have exactly. helped a lot. Like, because yeah. I think, cause, like, go ahead. Because I think, because like, Ramu's so fucking cool, and the lightning effects in this game look so fucking cool. Yeah. But it's still functionally the same as the fireball. Right. And it's really weird to be like, we all agree this is a pretty actiony game. Right. Of course. Uh, so it's weird to have like the one weapon that basically stays the same for 40 hours. Yeah, and it, it, like I kept thinking of God of War and like how much more depth and breadth there is to that combat system for basically the same lengths of game. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's, it's, no, kinda, it, it's frustrating. I'm like, I really wish there was more here. 
Meanwhile, I'd, I would be satisfied if the leveling worked. <laughs> I, I just, you can have a more simple action game as long as there are RPG systems behind it. Yeah, no, it just doesn't there was, want to be bound to being mortal. Right, there, yeah, like, no, it's true. And yeah, I, the, I want to shed that mortality the second I can. Right, and that's a, <laughs> that's the other angle. If it had RPG mechanics that were interesting and had me engaged in that front, I would also be more forgiving, but it right, right. doesn't. Right, like, I we're not going to... Like, I, I make fun of F FF7 Remake a lot, but that has a really cool RPG elements to it. Right, yeah. Yeah, that like that, I, that I was, gave me confidence that Square knew how to do that again. Right. And it felt like and feel like that it's gone. Yeah, least. there's a lot more going on behind the scenes, I feel, in FF7 remake than there is in this mm -hmm. on an RPG elements scale. Uh but obviously that's not as action y feeling as this is. Like mm -hmm. it's not as sharp as or yeah, as it doesn't feel, it's not not nearly as good a feeling a game to play, but, right. the, but the menu more structure with the with the with the actual options I've selected, mm -hmm. that part's neat. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's and yeah, having a it's second true, basic yeah. combo would be really great. Like, oh man, that same four hit combo, just four hits for 40 hours? For 40 hours, yeah. I honestly did expect that to change at some point. Yeah. Which the closest it gets to changing is a DT. Yeah, you do get the double trigger. I was trying to use initials. He's in the room, Bob. He's gonna fucking hear you. The first ability I bought was a stinger. I had no illusion <laughs> that I wasn't gonna get a devil trigger. Right, yeah. What other point did you think that? <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm excited to see what the devil, tr devil trigger looks like when you can turn motion blur off. Will that make it viewable? <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, gonna... that is, I I sure wish yeah. that you could turn motion blur off. That it feels like Japanese games basically never fucking let you do that. It's, I, it's I think a little they weird. said that they're gonna add it. I think they said that. Thank I, God. Yeah. I, I don't I don't even think the motion I think the motion blur in this game is by the standards of motion blur in games. <laughs> fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but motion right. blur in games isn't fine. <laughs> so, so I have some, I, so I have something interesting to talk about. You know, I, 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 uh -huh. I, what I'm playing this game in performance mode. I'm prioritizing frame rate. I'm like, wow, this game looks so fucking immaculate. Thanks to, uh, thanks to VRR, it, it most of the time, it, I don't notice the drops because it stays above the 48 frame rate threshold. Sony patch your fucking VRR to be better, you assholes. Why yeah, is it so help. bad? This guy um. Needs it. <laughs> Uh, do, do, do any of you guys think that this should be locked to 30? So no, that God, things no, are off no, in the no, distance no, look slightly no, better? No, no, absolutely not. I, I leave no space for that opinion. <laughs> that Yeah, literally, <laughs> this is an action game. Never, I never. Keep, I keep switching it back and forth. No shit, I've done this at least six times. And I'm like, maybe this is the time I will agree with the Digital Foundry video. No. And it lasts like three minutes each time. Then I get into a battle. <laughs> I and did any did anybody else get the overheat warning? No. No. But no. I cleaned my system right before it. I and I have a really I, open area to play it in. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, see, I had mine in the shelf of an entertainment system and I had to take it out. Once I took it out, it was no it, it did not happen again. Yeah, I was going to say your 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 house is undoubtedly warmer than Bob's too. Yeah, because it's been 110 degrees yeah. every day this week. Right, right. Even with an air conditioner, that the air conditioner's having trouble. They have limits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm lucky that uh, I was just barely able to put it in an open space in my hole in the ground. Barely. Uh, and it's been fine so far. Luckily, I sleep through the hot hottest part of the day. <laughs> right. And, and this doesn't have anything to do with Final Fantasy 16, but I fucking hate the PS5's design. I hope that PS5 Slim is real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting for yeah, that. The, the, I, the, I, the, I hate the stand. I, mm -hmm. Yes. I thought, what the fuck were you thinking, Sony? You're not, cool. you're, you're not, you're not going to be weird gaming Apple. Stop it. Um, last thing, and this is a tech thing, so I'm just going to get this out. I wish the frame rate was more stable. Sometimes it tanks in weird situations, like turning and looking down a road. Yeah. Um, I wish FSR2 would burn in hell. Um, <laughs> that's not a good enough temporal AA solution. And since this whole game's desaturated and kind of low contrast, it has problem guessing at what detail should be in any given shot because the motion- Is, mm. is that oh, yeah, why every the sand looks like funny? What, what's up, Chris? Is that why the sand looks funny? Then I desert? mean, that's a part of it for sure. Yeah, once in a while I catch what are just frames that should not be there. Like even I'm noticing things just melting around me. Yeah, sometimes shit just looks weird and bizarre in this, and it feels like it's stretching too far. 
the, um, so I, and the weirdest thing that I saw mm -hmm. was um, there is one side quest where two guys pick a fight with Clive and you beat them up and that's that's the side quest. Spoilers. But um, <laughs> that is the only time I think it goes direct in the game so far that you go directly from combat to one of those side quest cutscenes instead of like a actual right. cutscene. Yeah. So you get to see what Clive looks like in combat mode up real close. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, this is why it can hold 60 pretty well in combat. <laughs> it's his stunt double. <laughs> yes, uh, his, his stunt double that is melting. All the way from Metal Gear Solid 2. <laughs> I, uh, the, the last tech thing. Okay. And then I'm done. The HDR does not look great in this in the way that it does in a lot of Sony's first party offerings. And that bums me out because there are so many beautiful vistas in this. There's so much beautiful art. And between these three things, even I'm like, and reminder, reminder, hitting it again. So that way they're happy. Game code provided by Square Enix. I would love, I would quickly line up to buy this game again if it ran perfectly on PC, because I want to see what this art looks like. Because <laughs> it's got beautiful vistas and beautiful crystalline structures and awesome art. And it's just smeared seven times over. And I'm just like, there's so many polygons behind the butter. Does, while we're talking about the tech stuff, it really bothers me. I feel like the lighting makes this this 3D models look horrible a lot of the time. Every Not, time in interiors. Yeah, interiors. I don't know why look, interiors look as bad as they do. And but I they, feel like even if it's cloudy out, mm. the outside looks awful. I don't know why. It might like, be realistic. It, I'm just this like, is the future it, with ray tracing. It's so yeah, I, like, didn't, I, I didn't notice any of this, so I can't even talk about it. It is really gray. And like, that's part of why the HDR looks as bad as it does is because they put a realistic distance between everything you're looking at normally in the sky. Mm -hmm. So if you ever turn your camera up at the sky, you're like, holy shit, that's bright. Maybe we could use some of that dynamic range below the tree line. Mm -hmm. Oh, I turned HDR off. So that's why I didn't <laughs> notice that. I'm like, you're, you're making the game darker because I have an OLED and I guess everybody's keys this shit for lcds and you're like you can't trick me <laughs> yeah i even turned up the brightness a lot trying to get any of that back and i was like no it's just gray <laughs> yeah um other tech thing uh-huh main cast like clive jill and a few others incredible three uh, character models looks great you go even one degree off just one anyone in your base they are the most horrifying npc man i've ever seen in a triple a game think tomes is horrifying Tomes is on the better side of horror. What about Karen? Who's Karen? Oh, oh, it's spelled with the CH. Yeah. Yeah, I think most. Of, I think Jesus most of the models God. look pretty good. I, this is another thing where I'm like, yeah, they don't look as good as Horizon, but I bet. Uh, I bet this game cost less than half of what Horizon did. There's no way it costs that little. Every, every word in this is spoken. That I think there was one line of text I had to read in the last 20 hours. Well, aside from reading literal text yeah, uh, dumps, but. every new new event that feels like this millions of dollars burning on screen like every icon fight i don't I, know yeah i guarantee i guarantee i would be willing to bet almost anything that it cost at least at most half as much as horizon forbidden west i bet it costs more than a hundred million dollars that's would, still less than half of, that's still less than half of for horizon forbidden west because that's 240 240 yeah, I'll go. Remember, it's almost every, basically everybody in Horizon Forbidden West is a scanned actor. That costs a shitload of money. Right. And also it's an open world game. Yeah. And this is not. No, this is, this is a really long road game. <laughs> but yeah, I just think like, and if they aren't the main character, main base characters like Karen and stuff, they are just the worst looking NPCs I've ever seen. Which end of this equation, because people in chat are wondering, which end of this equation does Goots end up on? Goots is pretty good. I think Goots is one of the better looking characters for sure. But that so many of them, it's like, you are, I started making a character in an MMO and I just gave up and stopped. <laughs> And that is a main character in the town. I mean, the characters in this do look like Final Fantasy XIV characters. It has a different artist, though, so I don't understand how they did that. Yeah, uh, like, I look like at the their art facial, the, I, Like, their facial structures are the same. 
Mm -hmm. but, yeah, looking at the art, it's like, oh, wow, right. That is the artist, I believe, from Tactics or something. That mm -hmm. art is great. It sure did not get go into this realistic art style well. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Bob. You hit the credits. You beat this game. Did you see any engine? Because we still don't know I, what engine this runs on. I didn't see an engine, but I did like do the fast forward two credits thing. So understandable. It's got to be pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big. This is this is a very expensive game. Clearly, <laughs> like this this has to cost about as much as Uncharted Four. Didn't Uncharted Four only cost like forty million dollars? No. I remember people going insane by being like because. I, th I think we're all underestimating how fucking much being open world bloats the cost of a game. Mm -hmm. Because I remember people screaming during those Tomb Raider streams, yeah, no Uncharted game cost even half, this not even four. <laughs> but yeah, it's... 14 40 is crystal, million. 14 is Crystal Tools. This isn't Unreal Engine. Yeah, people, I know the rumors were it was an evolved version of Crystal, Crystal Tools, Tools, but who but knows? Then, yeah, but I don't know. They they yeah, who knows? It. Yeah, it, anyway, it, could, it could be yeah. it could be some weird hackery that Sony helped with because they supported this game. Oh also. yeah, yeah, right. I'm sure so, some of that. The cutscenes themselves look super immaculate. Sony clearly yeah, but, has a hand mm, in that. I mean, Square Enix is also really good at cutscenes. Like they have their whole own Google <laughs> Arts group for that. Uh, I don't know about real-time in-game cutscenes. Like, I haven't seen anything from Square that suggests this was in striking okay, range maybe, for them. Okay, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Because they, they rendered yeah, this, they're immaculate. This is the first game they've made where, you know, this is the first real PS5 game they made. Like, you couldn't do, they couldn't do their fucking cutscenes on the PS4. What is this revisionism? For spoken game? <laughs> Man, this, this, sure, this sure looks a lot better than Forspoken. And if rumors are to believe, cost about as much to make. I wouldn't doubt that for yeah. a second. Yeah, but they... I, they I, giving Forspoken people any money Boy. should never happen again. Yeah. Boy, comparing Final Fantasy XV's Titan fight to Final Fantasy XVI's Titan fight, Luma's productions should sure be put out on an ice flow. It's okay. They're no longer that. They are now folded back into the fold. Did anyone else have anything else they wanted to say? Um... I guess I'll go ahead and say, like, I, I feel like this is one of the worst uh, GRP or any RPG party I've ever had. Like, they're the most plain plank characters I've ever had to deal with for an entire game. Uh, Sid's great, though. Sid is so good. Let me tell you about Sid. Yeah. I've known this motherfucker for five minutes. Uh -huh. All right. And the moment he showed up on screen and I saw his fucking amazing clown shoes set of long sword arming sword uh -huh. with the leather wrap to make it look like katanas uh -huh. i immediately stopped being mad about clive's <laughs> bullshit shoulder strap <laughs> that that made up for it <laughs> beef quashed yeah no sid's exceptional right i'm like i love this guy and i'm playing the game and tosh comes in and she's like i know this guy and i'm like what do you mean and she's like this is a guy from game of thrones <laughs> i'm like fuck i <laughs> I do, I do wish this does feel a, this does feel a little bit <laughs> like Yoshi P fucking loves Matsuno. I get it, my man. I understand. I also love Final Fantasy Tactics. I feel like a little bit too much of this game is just him loving Final Fantasy Tactics. I mean, Tactics does fit into a Game of Thrones like tone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh,. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm excited to finish the rest of this game and feel exactly how I feel about the cast because for a while there, I'm like, fucking Jill. This is a fucking cardboard standee of a person following me around. And she's yeah, like, I do my hope name Jill is gets Jill. It's <laughs> like, she's got a rapier. She has ice powers. Done. What, uh, <laughs> what <are> the, <laughs> but, a but then I hit a thing and I was like, okay, I appreciate Jill a lot more now that I've hit this thing. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm not wanting of... to throw her into the ocean as much nowadays. We'll see how it goes through the rest. Because, you know, obviously, frame one, Goots is great. Yeah, Goots is I love Goots. Goots uh, a couple good. of the side quests have given really great moments to some of the guys around the hideaway. I'm like, wow, this is a really actually emotionally moving moment. I can't believe you hit it behind not even one of the not even one of the side quests that gives me a major upgrade. So I'm sure a lot of people are just gonna be like, no, I'm not doing that one. It doesn't have the doesn't have the symbol that I get a right. big upgrade from it. Yeah, they're like, here's 
there's just another side quest. You can do this if you want. And I'm like, well, I've done all of them since the thing happened and you warned me not to do the thing and then I did it anyway. So let's, let's go, baby. And then I, I do the side mission and the guy's like, hey, here's a piece of ass. Just the concept of ass. Here you go. By the way, backstory. And I'm like, well, that was the real reward. <laughs> Any amount of developing the people, the citizens of the base. Anyway, I think we're good. I've had to loop this Dragon Quest song right, too then, many times. Yeah. Boop. Oh, and just in case, that didn't time out. <laughs> Game code provided by Square Enix. <laughs> For half of us, the other half bought it. Can you find out which? Bob, if, if I wanted to find out who provided the game code for this game, how would I do that? <laughs> I think you'd act down and hit the button. I don't game want code provided by <laughs> Square Enix. This was exactly what he didn't want to happen. I, see, I know this was my fault, but I feel like it was yours. <laughs> you know what isn't your fault? And I really do mean that. <laughs> the Pod Lord! <gasps> Absolution. <laughs> I mean, oh fuck, the pod lords. <laughs> the pod solution. How did it come to this? Oh fuck. Yes, that's right, the Podlords. Podlords such as E. Lee Broyles, B. N. 12. Mega Man as a series does not exist. Each game is a standalone. There are no Mega Man fans because each game has a very little... Red Blaze 27, Suzu Shiro, Rado, 101 Shades of Wonderful Remastered, WTF Spider-Man, I uh, sentence has been deleted for safe for work reasons. <laughs> I was already kneeling for Final Fantasy 16 before, but I'm kneeling even harder now. Don't do that, man. You kneel too hard, you end up in the Yamcha crater. DFW 3K. Twink Link is nice at all. But when are we getting this link? Dan, uh, chat saying they can't see anything. What? Why yeah, can't you're, you're, we're, chat we're stuck on the big pink logo. I don't know. When. Okay, one second, one second, one second, one second. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hmm. Hey. Oh fuck. Podboards. Oh fuck. <laughs> <sighs> yes, that's right. The Podlords. Podlords such as E. Lee Broyles, BN12. Mega Man as a series does not exist. Each game is to stand alone. There are no Mega Man fans because each game has a. Red Blaze 27. Suzu Shiro. Rado. 101 Shades of Wonderful Remastered. WTF. Spider Man. I. Sentence has been deleted for safe for work reasons. <laughs> I was already kneeling for Final Fantasy 16 before, but I'm kneeling even harder now. It's just called laying down. <laughs> I'm so sleepy, Kakarot. DFW 3K. Twink Link is nice and all, but when are we getting this link? <laughs> yeah! Oh. Um. <laughs> mm. You can go to another series for that. It's got the Triforce of Protein. <laughs> How many reps are you doing? Shiny Mew. Kristen. Kyle Bjork. Hey, remember when that Microsoft exec thought they were getting Donkey Kong? Just thought it would be funny to bring up during this week. <laughs> 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 P3 is a Sonic CD game. Monster Hunter Ryzen and Raiden. Ominous and moody rendition of Toriador March starts. Mm. Mm. 
Cooper Tank. The higher ups have some plans. God damn it. <laughs> uh, that son of a bitch. <laughs> Moon Muse Entertainment Studio. Indigo Sykes. Drive Typecast. Heading to LA for a week. Listen, brats, Fantasy Star is the only reason we even got JRPGs! <laughs> that sounds made up. Yeah, I was like, that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This, holy shit, this combination is too well, much. Listen, <laughs> I'm sorry that Sega fans are the latchkey kids of gaming. I'm sorry. Evil Lucario. This raccoon has been given a gun. Ah. We will find out what he does with it later. Make good choices. AG's bird trip photos. Pelicans are silly looking birds that can eat anything it puts in its mouth, even cats and small birds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. True. <laughs> How Shinji 16, a dedicated music game enthusiast for over two decades, felt hearing Dan suddenly discuss DDR last week. Now it's last last week. Oh. The Super Mim. Say the line, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. oh, fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm just gonna zoom in on that a little bit. There you, there you go. <laughs> Sarlene. Sarlene. Timothy Fister couldn't workshop Final Fantasy 16 disease with infinite money complimentary into a bit, so instead have Adol Rossfield. <laughs> he's, he's an albino. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I mean, he's pretty white in some of those games. <laughs> he bleached my protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> like Adol, the ha the Clive, the hair dye fine shirt. Did you have to bleach your skin? Oh God, coming out saying he looks like the dude from Chaos Legion, and he's right. He died! Uh. <laughs> he Man, looks like Simon Belmont. <laughs> Sorry, Podlord. You're now into Chaos Legion. Have you changed anything? From his <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Bearded Joe. Pleochrome. Krungle Spum. Lord Richter. Lord Richter has beaten Tears of the Kingdom at last. That's gonna be one hard to game to top for game of the year. Mm. I turned myself into a belt, Morty. <laughs> I'm Jin Karik. Oh, oh, come on! Oh, I think come I'm actually on. taking damage. <laughs> oh. You you had to go somewhere vile and dark <laughs> to bring that back. I hope it was worth the cost. <laughs> Yeah, this was this is when you heard me rounding up Podlords going, oh, that's vile. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me, just drinking some tea. It's adorable. Oh, my. oh man, the Podlords are really jackknife. <laughs> <laughs> that's a neat Final Fantasy game you got there for Yoshi P, but do you know how you can make it better? Yes, Final Fantasy Tactics. <laughs> I assure you, we have no plans to acquire any Japanese devs. Don't mind that briefcase for Sega. Yup. And... Dog. <laughs> Thank you very much to our dog lords. Thank you, dogs. Thank you, dog lords. Thank you, dog lords. Thank you, dog lords. <laughs> That's an adorable and if you'd dog like lord. <laughs> And if you'd like to become a podler, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcast. For as little as $5 a month, you get access to many benefits such as early access to Chugging Bleach and Pokemon Go to the Movies, our two monthly anime review podcasts, extended and cut content from other shows when indeed such things exist to be given to you, uh, a patron-exclusive show occasionally where we, uh, you get to vote on what thing we have to watch and then talk about. Uh, you also get a billion commentary tracks for bad things we watch like 70 there's a lot i don't i advise you not to watch any of those movies but you can if you want
<laughs> that's the important thing that you have the choice. That's true. It's about options. Uh, you also get an entire movie. Isolation 119. <laughs> it's a fantastic movie about a man sitting in chair in sitting in a chair and drinking beers instead of solving a mystery. I really want the uh, the adventure game where that's an option. <laughs> you can just not do anything but drink. Yeah, I think people are saying that's basically oh god, what is Disco it? Elysium. Disco Elysium. Elysium. <laughs> I'm like they're right. Yeah, but time I don't think time passes and gives you a fail state then. I think uh, <laughs> I think you have to part. go to fan that's I think you have true. to go to Famicom Adventure Games to get that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but that's patreon.com slash TV podcast. If you don't have any money, it always helps us immensely to tell your friends, rate us on Thursdays, rate us on your favorite podcast app of choice, or like this video on YouTube right now. That's patreon.com slash TV podcast. We got like a little bit of news. Yeah. Which is why it was Stuff okay happened. that we spent that long talking about Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. Let me bring up the news document. Okay. I brought up the news document. Agro, we're going to start with you. Okay, uh, I, I think I'll start at the bottom here. Get this sure. out of the way. Um, so the people who made Scorn have been tweeting uh, bad overwrought poetry riddles. What? The oh. answers to which seem to be uh, the shapes that are on PlayStation oh, buttons. Oh, God. Of course, that's how they would announce it. Yeah, so <laughs> in, a, in, in, a, in a W that's truly made of two L's, uh, <laughs> Scorn might be showing up on PlayStation consoles. So this is your updated warning that Scorn sucks. Absolute <laughs> ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we both really wanted that game to be good. Yeah. Like we both really want, because it's like, oh. oh yeah, you know, we it's been a while since we had a game that the focus wasn't combat and you built a lot of, a lot of tone and puzzles and oh these puzzles are bad and there's combat i mean the ps5 will probably run it better than my gtx 1080 did will that help it or make it a good game now i, I, I hear the art and environments are really good now i'm not saying this to be mean or classist or anything but you said gtx and i went that's the wrong letter because they've been making RTX cards for three generations. My brain finally switched over to... That's the wrong letters. You said the wrong ones. Oh, wow! <laughs> Dan yeah. promised owning a 4090 wouldn't change it. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. It, it won't change anything. None of the games will run white. No, nothing, nothing will ever change that. Oh my God. Uh, so, Munfish... Uh, put a date to the atomic heart dlc uh, it's called annihilation instinct releases august 2nd got a couple new weapons you still have your gloves somehow it apparently picks oh my up God. right where the first game ends what uh -huh. that's weird your glove now has time powers <laughs> okay uh, uh, wait i've played first person shoes where your glove has time powers before no you haven't Okay, yeah, is this up. fucking is this um <laughs> is this the, is it that is this that fucking Raven game? Right? God, what is that what is that called? Uh Time Shift? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 it's not Time Shift. That's not what I'm thinking of. Oh my god. Singularity. That's it. Singularity, that's what I'm thinking mm. of. So this game, uh, the article I read suggested that the story of this game is digging into your weird vending machine girlfriend. Oh, great. Which was the best part of that game, so I'm excited to to get back into it. I'm excited um, to get back into that Coke machine. Do you, that. <laughs> do you think that people will post that this is IP abandonment by the end of the DLC like they did apparently for the, the okay. um, uh, Alpha Protocol? Uh, Callisto Protocol. Callisto I Protocol. watched it. Do you want Al Alpha Protocol? Is um I, that a is really, a very a really bad and a really bad game. Obsidian's um, 360 masterpiece, I hear. Yes. So the spoilers for the Callisto Protocol uh, <laughs> DLC. Oh, I was going to The play ending of the do, do, do. Oh wait, let me hit this button and then do, do, do. You were going to play the DLC? Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe I'll finish that game and be like, I'm still hungry. <laughs> I guess I should take dumb. it off too cuz apparently we're going to do this in the middle. I don't give a shit, hit me. <laughs> okay, uh the end of that DLC is like hey, a Bob, smash hey, cut to the to the main character's uh mutilated body like hanging in a bunch of cyber shit. The the uh events of both the game and DLC were dreams. And um 
and he's just hanging there like yeah. somebody come help um, me because so, they're never going to do anything uh, with that like ip ever again? again yeah they're great okay he's they're safe now aggro tell him uh, are we good yeah you're good um you might want to grab a tarp because i'm about to scanners explode <laughs> mm. <laughs> This sounds like all the more reason we should play that DLC. So, okay, back back to the DLC that uh, was uh, announced. Yeah. Yes. Um, I like it's you know it's, it picks up right where you left off. Your dick in a coke machine. Yeah. I'm like as soon as I read that I'm like oh man now I I want all of us to play that DLC because I'll be the only one who starts with any fucking weapons. I really hope frame one, the game opens up. Hey, uh, we made a shooter, so here's all your fucking guns. God, that would be so good. Thank you. What a game. Yep. Can't wait. Yeah. We have a podcast on Atomic Heart. Did you know that? <laughs> you could come listen to us talk about playing a game no one cared about. They, they added in some New Game Plus shit. Where, like, the, uh, the, the basic mustache mannequin droids are like you know they, they they're faster and they're more powerful and they're immune to glove powers why would i want that <laughs> <laughs> they grab your dick and then they twist it <laughs> anyway they train these robots to do the good old dick twist so baldur's gate 3 a game that has uh existed for years and isn't out yet it was coming out what like august 12th or 20th, there was a two in there. But it's now coming out on PC August 3rd because they're done with it. And they need a little more time on the, the PS5 version, so that's that's been pushed to September 6th. And in an interview, the head of Larian Studios literally said like, yeah, the PC version's done and we don't want to go up against all the other shit. So it's releasing early. That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Absolutely. Yeah, Why that not? makes sense. Smart move. Sorry, guys. I got so used to just hitting the Dragon Quest button and leaving the music running. It's, it was like 30 minutes this episode. Uh, we still don't know when the Xbox version is coming out. They say they're working on it. But, but um, since they have to have feature parody between this uh -huh. Series X and Series S, they they're can't. like, I don't think you understand how cool our multiplayer is. And like it lets multiple players explore these huge cities independent of one another. Oh. And the S is not going to do that shit. Yeah. As it turns out, you might need a lot of RAM to yeah. fit the entire city. In yeah, all I'm, I'm so, so glad there's a can... one terabyte version of that boat anchor coming out soon. <laughs> You know, uh, I'm going to voice this here because I was thinking about it again. Why does everyone have such a huge mental block against looking at the digital only PS5 as a real console and then turn around and be like, but the Series S is a great budget option. I'm like, that doesn't have a uh, disc drive either, asshole. Because, because they're stupid. Because game journalists are stupid. Please slow down. Look, <laughs> <laughs> let, let me get this in my notes. Like this whole talk, like, there's two groups of people that the Series S is for. <laughs> Game journalists who are insane and need a, be a bedroom Xbox. Like, that's a rational concern a normal human being would ever even conceive of. And and children. I thought he was... And children. Watch it to the... They're just common people. You know, people of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was right. Yeah, no, so it's insane to just be like one of these exists and the other one doesn't. Because it's a hundred dollar well, price difference. We're having a terabyte model come out that didn't they announce it's three fifty or three eighty or yeah, something it's insane? It's like it's dude, 350, you, it's within fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. What are you doing? And yeah. if yeah. and if Sony if the revision is real and Sony slashes the price, which they might, it, it'll be price equal probably and that's not a winning proposition for the series as no which is which is still sadly because it was the only one they were making during the uh, chip shortage far and away the better the, the one more people have yeah that's what i hear so they've like trapped themselves into this bizarre situation where they can't drop support for the series s they have to support that the whole fucking gen and the further we get into the gen and the more games actually start pushing these consoles the more the more publishers are going to be like, no, we can't. We literally can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I, I still can't get over Final Fantasy 16 might be the first next gen game because it's making so many PS5s go ah and start dying. <laughs> um let's let's move on news wise though. Uh hey guys. Hmm. You've heard of MetaQuest, the VR headset from Meta, formerly yeah. known as Facebook. It's fucking Meta. Well, you know about PlayStation Plus, right? What if I told you they announced MetaQuest Plus? You get two titles a month, and and you get to keep them as long as you're subscribed, just like PlayStation Plus. Okay. Just like your games with gold. And it's sixty dollars a year. Is that right? Okay, I didn't write that down. It's it's fifty or sixty dollars a year. In the first month, is pistol whipped. <laughs> first month, pistol whipped. And then, and then this other game I keep hearing about, but I don't know. Pixel Ripped 1995. Apparently, if you sign up before it launches, uh, or by the end of the first month it launches during, which is July, it's a dollar. So if you somehow have a MetaQuest. And a dollar. And a dollar. If you still have a dollar left after you bought that MetaQuest. I feel like they chose these games based on their names being similar. Pistol Whip and Pixel, Pixel Ripped. Ripped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Pixel Ripped <laughs> just came out. Okay. And Pistol Whip is pretty top fucking tier, so... <laughs> I mean, like, like it's a subscription service. You're not, you're not buying them individually. So it wasn't like if we put them both up at the same time, maybe they'll accidentally and, yeah. buy the wrong one right. and then buy the right one. Zabbit's right. Next month they're gonna have Pixel Pickle Rick. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a Meta Quest, and if I did, I still wouldn't buy games on mobile except for to just check out the quality of the headset in and of itself, mm -hmm. just so I could know because we do what we do. I would like to know. Um, but maybe, maybe that's for you, listener. All one of you, this might apply to. God, the, it really is that. It's a slice of a slice of a slice, right? Mm. Uh, anyways, uh, my only other news, well, I have two things of news, but the only other one I've written down is To a T mm -hmm. is a game that was announced. It's made by Keita Takahashi. The main character is stuck T-posing and has to live life T-posing. It's about the adversity they face, T-posing. The trailer is very, very whimsical, very funny, very charming, as they sing a song about the life of this person who is stuck T-posing. It's really good. For people who don't know who the fuck Keita Takahashi is, it is not Gene Karya. <laughs> it's, in fact, the creator of Katamari Damashi. So, yeah, look that up. Look up that trailer. We don't have a date on it. We don't have a year on it, but it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Last news for me, they, they launched the 4060 graphics cards. Hey, guess what? Mm, they're they starting. They're starting. They are starting to kneel. <laughs> hey, guys, still don't buy graphics cards. Don't buy a graphics card. They not will until learn. not not until uh, not until the CEO of of Nvidia gets fucking Joshua Grammed and covered <laughs> in pitch, set on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. Uh, Jesus, they. I, it occurred to me recently that they literally starved this generation of memory because they want to incentivize you buying the next generation with the memory. They thought DLSS 3 was good enough for this gen. Uh, this is the best value proposition since the 4090. That still doesn't make it good enough. Do not buy a graphics card. <laughs> graphics code not provided by... <laughs> <laughs> Nvidia graphics card provided by oh shit <laughs> big thing to mention is powered by Intel do 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 hey Bob hey I hear you got news and I stole the two of T news yeah Emperor actually announced several things today so that was one of them that was one of the things uh, another thing they announced is a Blade Runner 2033 Labyrinth a okay. Blade Runner 30, 2033, or is, that is, is that, the name? That's the name. It's Blade Runner 2033 Labyrinth. Are we mixing Blade the Runner movie game. Labyrinth and Blade Runner? No. It's set between be, the two movies. That'd be something new. It's in between the new... Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Um, th this is the first internally developed Annapurna game. What? Oh. Yeah. Bold choice. Yeah, they're normally just a publisher. Right? right? Huh. Um, and it seems to be playing as a Blade Runner after they lose their jobs. 
because there aren't any more ru- runners to blade. <laughs> yeah, that's what goes on. Yes. Uh huh. I mean that, that. I mean that. That. That's how like all. That's like how all extra Blade Runner shit is written. It's, exactly it, what Bob just said. It's the RPG <laughs> for Mario RPG. Uh, and it, it shows. It, it, it's just narration is someone uses some sort of device that I assume lets them scan a Blade Runner's or a. A cyber brain or something and lets them scan through things they saw so they're like investigating uh p- dead people's thoughts they they're something like that viewing the memories of a dead person a la wild wild west that's what it seems like but it's unclear it could just be footage will, from a facility that's now closed will there be a giant mechanical spider bob gamer premonition i don't think so dr aggro I'm specifically worried that there will be. <laughs> now that I've said it, I know. But even before, <laughs> any, any times like someone like we're gonna make a Blade Runner thing, you're gonna fuck it up with giant robots, aren't you? <laughs> right. Okay. I keep seeing crossover art for Megan, that new movie uh-huh. with the robot android girl. I don't know anything about that movie. Uh, but the crossover was Ghost in the Shell, and she's like a cyber assassin. And I'm like, wait, is this movie actually dope? <laughs> <laughs> wait, I'm so confused. <laughs> or is this just going to be a generic sci-fi, or sorry, horror movie with some sci-fi aesthetic? Hmm. I don't know. There's only one way to find out. There's not, though. No, there's, there's more. There's only one way to find there's, out. There's You're just trying avenues. to escape the gravitational pull of a podcast. <laughs> hit the afterburners. Um, <laughs> And then they also announced uh-huh. uh, We Kill Monsters. It's an action RPG, but it's really unclear about any other specifics after that. They just saw a dude who's wearing um, like medieval armor and has a gigantic pack walking around environments. They don't show combat. They just show that. Who knows right. what it is? <laughs> It'll probably be weird because he has like a really big backpack full of all kinds of different kind of weapons. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if they might be doing something quirky and it's like, it's like first edition Dungeons and Dragons. Your fighter has to carry 18 fucking weapons because everything has a specific material you have to hit it with. <laughs> um, they, uh, Red Dead Redemption original got rated for, in Korea. So that probably getting a remaster of some sort. Huh. So keep yeah. an eye out. Yeah, because... The- I, n- I never played it because it played so fucking bad on 7th Gen. Yeah. yeah. And it never came to anything else, so maybe I'll I'll actually give it a shot if they do a remake. But now, but I'm also worried it'll be as bad as those uh, GTA ones. Uh, well, those were working on the like PS the mobile PS2 version. stuff, whereas this was a PS3 360 game. I think it'll up. At least better. they act. At least they actually said that they were making this. Like the what, last time we heard, it was like, yeah, uh, people didn't like the dog shit PS2 ones, so we canceled all our plans to do any other. Yeah, really. that's the yeah. last thing we heard about this, so that's it's kind of true. surprising that. Of course, where it's just, if they have those assets, they don't need to get any new ones made, like the assets from the PS3 360. Nobody's going to be like, no, I mean, it ran on ones. the 360. They should be able to just, like, get that running on modern platforms. What? Isn't it even? It might be back and pad on. People Xbox are saying one. it is. Yeah. Okay, that's why I saw it. Uh, but of course, no way to play it on PlayStation currently, because that's how that goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Sony. Um, this game, Hollow Cocoon, was announced. It was just a interesting looking trailer. It's a first person survival horror game set in 1980s Japan, and it just shows him like exploring a decrepit uh, bus stop in the like in the boonies. Mm. It looked pretty neat. Uh, made by the creators of Cinerius Somnia. Which I had not heard before, heard of before, but it's on Steam and has positive reviews. Mm. Air Twister is coming to consoles. Thank God. Uh, for people who don't know, is Air that Twister, the Panzer Dragoon type thing? Uh, it's it's uh, fantasy or <laughs> fantasy space zone? harrier space oh, harrier. Fantasy zone. No, space it's, it's, it's it's space harrier. Yes. I always get the two mixed up because they say, "Welcome to the fantasy zone. Get ready!" at the beginning of space harrier. Right. Fantasy Zone, for people who don't know, is a different game. Uh, but yes, it is that for iOS with a soundtrack that is bootleg, stolen-ass queen music. Yeah, a it is not track. Even, it is not even fucking like, oh, this is inspired by. This is fucking blatant. And also this is made by Yu Suzuki, the creator of Shenmue. Right. And Virtua Fighter. Right. 
So Yu Suzuki used to be known as the main arcade guy for 3D shit at Sega. So probably also made Space Harrier. Probably. Pretty fucking sure, but who knows? Also, I see you over there making me whiter. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You're just as pale as you were before. Yaola <laughs> Ula. Oh, God. Whiter is better. <laughs> um, and then my last thing. Niantic is closing their LA studio and laying off 230 employees. These yeah. Are, you, I heard they're also shutting down two games, right? Yeah. Shutting down NBA All, all World. <laughs> you want to say All Star. Right. But no, it's All World in canceling Marvel's, Marvel World of Heroes, which I believe has not launched yet. They were like, it was probably out in beta or something, but it's yeah. just done Ooh. now. Um, That's rough. Yeah. Yeah. For the guys who made Pokemon Go. That sure is the one game of theirs that really popped. Yeah. Uh, I know for a fact that one of the other games they were working on was pretty good, but then they said made some changes to it. I don't even know if that shit's released for real yet, mm. but those changes really <laughs> pissed off the player base. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I, I got yeah, invited to some other game they were in beta. I don't even remember what it is now. Might be the one I'm talking about. Maybe. But yeah, I'm excited for Air Twister. Uh I have to wonder how much of this Niantic news, though, is the the interest rates being real again. Yeah. Yeah, that's very I mean, possible. I mean, part of it, um, but they, they did changes to Pokemon Go recently that really pissed people off and knocked their revenue down like 20 million a month. Whoa. Um, if I remember, what they did is they made it too good, and then they went, oh, shit, that was an accident, and then they halved the distance you could spawn Pokemon from, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that was enough to go take them from 70 million a month to 50 million a month, Oof. which is a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. Yep. On the Mar... It, it, it seems like we really are at the end of this of this Marvel shit, because apparently Secret Invasion ain't doing so fucking hot on Disney Plus either. Like, it's their lowest rated one. Mm. like their uh, lowest viewed one that's crazy because the concept of secret evasion seems really cool but then they have that ai generated intro and i'm like nah i'm good also <laughs> it's a streaming show and everybody has figured out by now those are actually never cool ever i actually would have fallen for this one frankly <laughs> right like they got samuel jackson <laughs> and the concept of it is neat yeah mm. it's i think it's probably neat but eh. It definitely is the only Marvel thing I was actually interested in, like, since and or it feels, or I guess since the last Spider-Man. And of course, I want to see Guardians 3, but I haven't, did like... You, did you just call on and or a Marvel thing? Star <laughs> Wars is a Marvel thing now, like, no, it's, no, it's close I, enough. I, I was trying to say <laughs> end war. But oh, okay. It, end game is the actual name of it, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no. You can't just be like my favorite Mickey Mouse character is Mace Windu. <laughs> yes. I mean. <laughs> Who's your favorite mutant? Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, It was Tom Clancy's End of War. That's what that yes. was. Yes. Oh, that was, there was an actual thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't just a uh, holy source within Bob Skull. <laughs> like, is this a John Scalzi book I haven't heard of? Or? <laughs> hey, Chris news okay uh the Qu a quake 2 remaster has been rated in korea that's cool hell yeah i like quake 2 i'm sorry <laughs> korea I, keeps... I haven't pl I, I haven't played it i'm interested in finding out whether or not i like the game all about the strogue yeah <laughs> uh, uh, reminder that quake 2's name at one point was war with an o that's it oh we are in the wrong timeline yeah <laughs> No, that's true. That's like true. War. Uh, what uh, is it good for? A gourd for. Uh, uh, I was going to say real quick, I actually like the PS1 version of Quake 2 as well. So I, I, I like Quake 2's plural. Yeah, it was like, isn't Quake 2 is the one that, that is liked? No. I thought it was one in uh, three that were not liked, but. No, do you have that so backwards? It's <laughs> one in three people love. Mm. Yeah, choose, people choose don't like two very one. much because it's like the it's it's the one that was it's like the first thing they made after John Romero left, so it felt like it had a little bit of lacking on the creative level. Still mm -hmm. fine on like the revolutionary tech level because John Carmack was there still. Mm -hmm. He hadn't fucking figured out skeletal animations yet though. No, no, that shit's hard. That shit's real hard. But yeah, Trent Reznor, 
um, also left because he was like, the first Quake's awesome. The second Quake is just, what the fuck is this soulless bullshit? That's the Nine Inch, <laughs> yeah. com- that's the nine inch Nails composer yeah. who went to compose mm. films and shit later. Films such as The Social Network. And now you know. Uh, Inti Creates announced a new game. Yohane the Parhelion Blaze in the Deep Blue. It is a Love Live Metroidvania based on a Love Live Sunshine spinoff anime coming out this month called Yohane the Parhelion Sunshine in the Mirror. I'm sorry, God, I won't drink the cough syrup before going to bed I, I, this, ever again. This blew my mind. It was like, Sunshine is so old now. There's like two more Love Live since then. What happened? Uh, it comes out November sixteenth. They they mentioned that some parts of the of the like the dungeon will be randomized whenever you enter them. I don't like that very much. That that's a fucking red flag. But other than that, it seems like a pretty standard Metroidvania type thing. Like you have weapon crafting and bosses and can I whatnot. cook food? That's the bar. I don't know. They didn't say yet. Ritual of the night to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I have to warn people. Because I positioned for the character in the in the thumbnail, I do okay. not believe Nico is in this game. <laughs> Bob. Yeah. It is... Bob, how could you? Fuck you. <laughs> Deal breaker. It's sad. <laughs> it's sad. Uh, so so in that Luigi's Mansion stream, Dan was talking about man, why don't anybody just like give a hundred people two years to make a game and see what that looks like now? Uh huh. Uh well. East 10 comes out later this year and we got like the final trailer for it like of the actual finished game uh, which is basically that like e- East 9 had like 120 people on it and took them like two years and that's crazy because East 9 has like the huge open world verticality even <laughs> right yeah. the, the, the quote yeah. unquote open world <laughs> the open city <laughs> that isn't really all that big no no but it's the concept that's big in your heart <laughs> but yeah that, th- this trailer looked dope this game looks really exciting thank god the u.s release isn't this year yeah that would sure be rough okay. to try I and would fit die. in yeah i would oh like mm. it's it's funny how much just even being like yeah w- w- we found like a cheap mocap studio to help our cutscenes improve their cutscenes. Yeah. yeah it's like clearly lower end but it's still there and looks real nice you know if the u.s indie development scene was a bit more network friendly and also like <laughs> Had, had more of an understanding of the value low budget mocap could bring to your productions. Maybe in a different timeline, we were a mocap studio. <laughs> so I looked into that shit years ago and went, wow, this is, you could like do shit for a game. They, they, they still kept the, they still kept the UI in the center of the fucking screen. <laughs> I was like, yeah, UI is important. What the fuck do you I, want which, them to do? Which I didn't, which I wish they could have put that shit up <clears> higher. For anyone who hasn't seen this, okay. You know how normally you put your shit at the top of the screen and then some things in the corner? Well, what if we did the middle right? <laughs> Is that cool with you? I'm interested you, to see how this goes. I saw that screenshot when he tweeted it, and I just I stared at it for like five minutes, I'm thinking, like, like, can I get my brain used to this? <laughs> Like, I feel I mean, like maybe not... this is one of the, like, the QWERTY keyboard. Like, maybe there's a better maybe way. Maybe Dvorak is If we the just way. put in the, it's right. not that. Um, <laughs> if we just put in the time, <laughs> we can relearn this. Uh, you know, I saw the meter on the side, and I still, I didn't, I didn't stare at it and deeply contemplate what it meant and why it was there. But it was a vertical line that looked like a meter, and I'm like, are we trying to push the flag? Is, are we guiding <laughs> the rail car? Why is this here? What is this supposed to tell me, and why is it in the middle of the fucking screen? East Nines is also in the middle of the screen, but that had a little bit more justification because it had multiple characters' health bars. It felt like it was in the bottom corner and just large. Right. Mm, yeah. This is in the center of the fucking screen. Yeah, they stacked I... enough shit where it's not debatable anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, it looks like a healer set up at an MMO where they just have all their shit yeah. in one place. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm still really glad they gave the the main girl an axe. It was like, no, yeah. that's what she needs. Yeah, that's what an easy yeah, girl she's a should have. Yeah, I mean, she's about. I mean, the whole <laughs> thing. Yeah. It's East Ten Nordics, and they're they're fighting like, I guess North Sea vampires. Yeah, those Hell things yeah. are weird. <laughs> they went from monstrous cocks to more dicks. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and now a PSA. I have a PSA. Um, 
Okay. This is a PSA directly to uh, the communications boss of CD Projekt Red. Oh, God, yeah, go off. <laughs> <laughs> shut your fucking face. <laughs> Just shut up. He did one of those fucking interviews where he's like, well, we fixed up Cyberpunk real good, but people were too harsh on it initially. And I'm like, no, they weren't. You got taken off multiple storefronts. Shut the fuck up. Everybody forgot. Everybody had given you a pass. You know what was more Why frustrating you... than seeing that man say that was seeing a bunch of journalists line up to be like, he's right. People were too mean. I'm like, you motherfuckers didn't play the, what? how many copies were sold on a, a PS4 and Xbox One? Like, like 20 30... million. Right. Yeah. That's 20 million people who got an unplayable version of your game. Fuck you. You should have St played the PC one. Stop being sympathetic to this guy. Mm -hmm. That's it's fucking like... unreal. It's annoying enough when people try to relitigate their losses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this dude's trying to relitigate re a win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they clawed their way back from one of gaming's most high-profile fuck-ups. Uh -huh. They crashed one of the biggest hype trains ever made into a crater. Got that shit back. They're prepped for a new release after Trigger saved their studio. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this dumb, myopic fucking asshat has the gall to go out in public and be like, they just hated it because that was the cool thing to do. That game was fine and you were all wrong. Fall in a hole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just like that, obviously, something you should never say, right? Like, yeah. you can sync that because you're an idiot executive mm -hmm. that you're going to sync that. You're the communications boss. Not doing this is your job. You're not right. supposed to fuck up in this exact way. Like, all you had to do was not just shut the fuck up. Challenge level impossible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, you don't even have to condemn yourselves because because the uh, somebody that it, they were being interviewed and it got brought up. Just look <laughs> pensive and and like nod your head. Be like, yeah, that was sure a rough launch, but I'm proud of the team bringing it back. That's all you had to fucking say. Well, maybe mm -hmm. the questions were really leading. And then you look at the questions like, do you think you are free of all sin? <laughs> that you have done the right thing and it is they who are wrong? <laughs> You're looking down at the questions and it's just a knife on a clipboard. <laughs> do something with this. <laughs> yeah, that was infuriating. So so the, the Sony Microsoft... Uh, the FTC suit is happening right now. We're not going to talk about all the bits of minutiae because there's too much and most of it is stupid and exhausting. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's at the very end of it, we'll do a quick recap of the highlights, but I am not coming in week after week to talk about this shit. Mm. It, it's mostly all the shit that it always is. Our, our penis is small. Our penis is small. Please let us buy Activision. Our penis is small. That That's just what it is mostly. Uh, but something they were not supposed to fucking show, they poorly redacted a document and took it down as soon as people reported this. They were like, oh shit, people saw. Um, the Last of Us 2 cost $200 million and Horizon Forbidden West cost $240 million. Now, here's the fun part of that. Now do the math of how much The Last of Us 2 made back towards that. Sales-wise compared to Horizon, which we know sells pretty well. I feel Last of Us 2 sold like 10 million that Did we it? know. Yeah, it sold a lot. Okay, I remember they came out with numbers at first and then they went silent. Okay. Well, let me see. Yeah, it, it sold it sold 2 million. I mean 10 million, so it it comfortably made it. Yeah, back, no, that would make up back. for everything. Especially wonder... since it's a first party Sony game, so it has better margins than right. a third party game would have. I wonder if um also it was the fucking pandemic so the majority of sales were probably digital in which case Sony gets 100%. Yep. I wonder if that includes the marketing budget. No, probably not. Almost certainly not cuz that's never how it works. It's really funny because um that guy who left Sony who now is tied up in music production crypto whatever. Mm. <laughs> Not going to talk about it or whatever the fuck he's got. I, I guess it was game publishing or crypto or whatever. We're not going to talk about it. But the 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 most recent guy, I believe it was Sean Layden, but I'll have to look up a picture to be absolutely positive on that because I'm terrible with names, was talking about, yeah, these games cost $200 million now. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, literally that exact amount. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm sure, publish, I'm sure publishing, I'm sure marketing is on top of that because... um. 
the FTC thing was also like, yeah, a bunch of people are saying, yeah, with marketing games cost a billion dollars now. <sighs> Fuck that. Which is prob no which way. is probably specifically talking about Call of Duty, which is marketed everywhere and has to be made on such a tight time frame that right. it has obscene amounts of staff on it. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, those Ubisoft to... games that are made on a tight, tight, tight time frame and have obscene amounts of people on them. Uh, by yeah. the way, Assassin's Creed Valhalla has 2,000 more people on it than Forbidden West did. Of course. Like, that's not even a surprise. But a lot of that is bringing people on for the last year and a half of development, like 2,000 extra people. So it's like, yeah, you spent more money, but it was all during this chunk instead of sanely over a longer period of time. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna, it's going to be, real, again, it's going to be really exciting when that Avatar game sells like 80% of what they project and the company collapses. While playing Final Fantasy 16, I was like, oh yeah, that cool Prince of Persia game's coming out. Nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> neat. <laughs> that is cool. I won't be getting it day one because it's $50, but it's neat nice that it exists. Look, maybe it's worth it. Metroid Dread was worth its price, and this is cheaper than that, so... Metroid Dread is Metroid Dread. <laughs> Maybe this is also Metroid Dread. <laughs> what if it is Metroid you know what? Dread? No, like, I'm what if will... it's just Metroid Dread? I'm, I'm like, willing how did, to guys, inter... how did we not notice the giant bird warrior in the trailers? <laughs> that was really obvious. I am willing to entertain it could be Metroid Dread, but I'm not trusting a Ubisoft studio to give me Metroid Dread. I'll have to see what other people's, what normal people say about that first. Mm -hmm. That's fair. <laughs> uh, Gravity Circuit, a game we've talked about a couple times from Steam Next Best and such. It is the it is the shatter hand like with kind of like a Mega Man structure. Uh launches July 13th. Yeah, it's the one with the Game Boy color aesthetic. So all the characters have only three colors to their palette and transparency. It looks really tight visually. I've been excited for this for a really long time. So of course it's coming out this year. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, uh Valve decided we're not getting a target put on our back because we allowed some bullshit AI game onto our store. We're no, no AI generated assets in your games. If you're going to sell on steam, unless you can prove to us that you own every single thing that was fed into that AI art generator. <laughs> that's, that's uh, something someone's going to uh, be able to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and they're they're pulling games down. So uh, check if Hawk and Reborn is still on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> One moment, I'm gonna check that. When's uh when's High on Life getting pulled? You know this is gatekeeping, and that's we need less of that in the gaming industry. Uh huh. Yeah, go off, King. <laughs> Hello, police. There's a crazy. It's still man there at the phone. moment. <laughs> His name's Phil Spencer, and he's trying to buy me. <laughs> who knows? New. Who knows how long it will be there, though. Uh, and um, if you if you make your game in Unity and use any of their new stuff they're pushing that involves the AI, you can't ship on Steam. That's like funny that, as hell. Because they've already been caught being like, yeah, we were partnering with people who were just pulling assets from other places and claiming they made them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of yep. course. Boy, what? um, <laughs> what is that? What is that fucking dickhead's name? The war criminal from Call of Duty who went over, like, from Activision who went over to uh. John Ricitello? That wasn't Call of Duty. That was EA. Yeah. Oh, that was EA. I, yeah. I, I'm okay. I got I got the mix up. But John Ricitello sure went over and immediately started ruining Unity, huh? Yeah. Yep. He sure did. He's really good at that one thing. Mm. For people who don't know, that is the same person that the Suda 51 No More Heroes character is based on because he hates that guy, which is why he loves Unreal Engine. So if you ever saw a trailer where Travis Touchdown was like, Unreal Engine, what a fucking awesome engine. That is why. And I assume everything that happens in No More Heroes 3 is lore accurate to real life. Yeah. I, I mean, you you want the real deep story? You go to Travis Strikes again, and you get to hear about how much that guy sucks. <laughs> oh, man. I was talking to Bob the other day, just random thing, not related to the news, about how much I want to replay Travis Strikes again or No More Heroes 3, but I feel like I really don't want to touch one, and I really, really don't want to touch two ever again. Like, no, no. <laughs> uh Travis Strikes Again is really good now that it's not $50 or whatever it launched at, which was definitively a bad price. Yeah, that definitely didn't launch too high. And I have the same feeling, but I'm, I'd am i be fine with going back to one, but two, no. Never. 
I'd yeah. probably be fine with playing two one more time in my life. One was good for me. Even though they have the introduction of that cool character. If, they, if, they, if they did like a new port of it, probably not on the Switch. I yeah, I need I'd them to fix the again. PC port of No More Heroes 1. I want to. I need that. I want to play the censored version of No More Heroes 1 once all the way through just to know all the changes. The PS3 one? There's uh, like a censored version of the Wii yeah, one, I believe. Yeah, isn't it Japan? Yeah, the for Japan. Mm. Yeah. So it's like the lady who has her whole head blown off and ch chunks missing Confetti from her. or something. It's literally like, it's just, it's like a cartoon bomb exploded in her face. And it's just sort of darkened. And she's got a squiggly outfit. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is good. Oh, Fantastic. Europe Europe and Japan are censored? Oh, for wow. One? Jesus. Okay, well, uh, that's it, right? That's all the news? Pretty yep. slow news week. Yep. Yeah. Once again, why we were okay spending so long talking about Final Fantasy 16, the biggest game of the month. I'm like, let me double check that mentally. Right. I'm yeah, like, Diablo <laughs> 4 just barely came out last month, right? <laughs> we're going to have to go to the no, month no, soon. It was no, this Diablo month. Diablo 4 was the beginning of this month. The second biggest game of the month. <laughs> the biggest game in the hearts of the gamers right now. Right, Street Fighter 6 probably, was also this month. No, was that? Yeah, but but it hasn't sold as much as Street Fighter yet. I mean, as much as Final Fantasy yet. Oh, okay. I was like, like I said, we, we, we can go down to the Fortnite. We can get granular. <laughs> The biggest game of the week, fuckers. Which means it's time yeah, to talk this, about the ending on Twitter. <laughs> that's how this year fucking feels, where there's like mm -hmm. a game every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, the, 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 the emotional experience of gliding straight from Tears of the Kingdom through the last few hours of Octopath 2 right into post-demo yeah. 16 was wild. You know what's going to be equally wild? Mm. Going from the end of Final Fantasy 16 into the DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. <laughs> That's going to be fucking weird. Yeah, I'm going to probably end up going from Final Fantasy 16 to uh, The Legend of Heroes Trails into Reverie, which is finally fucking coming out. The oh last God. one that came out was the end of 2020. Yeah. And so I'm sure somebody's going to be like, but they ported the two PSP ones they never did before between those times. And to which I say, fuck you. That's not more of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Their priorities were wrong. <laughs> they chose incorrectly. I might have time to play Star Wars now. Mm. I hope it's working. I feel bad. He said that I was like, Star Wars what? <laughs> <laughs> the Star Wars Cal lightsaber. Yeah. yeah, I honestly keep forgetting that game came out this year. <laughs> well, I will find out from you how solid that game is and whether or not after the Xenoblade 3 DLC, if I should play that. <laughs> uh, but that's going to do it for this episode of Big Thing to Mention. Reminder, tomorrow, if you're listening to this on YouTube, probably today, Bob and I are streaming, with Eric, most likely, Luigi's Mansion 3. Triple. The biggest horror game ever made bob did you know that game is approximately 17 times as long as resident evil 3 remake that sounds about right <laughs> this is the whole list of things that just because they're true doesn't mean you have to say them <laughs> uh chris do you have any plans for the next week i'll probably stream blaster master zero one at some point i'm excited to see how poorly that game holds out because i think that's one of the ones they shipped on 3ds i think it's in fact the only one they shipped on 3ds uh they that also shipped on ps4 so it launched not on... till later though it launched on 3ds Man. really really i'm pretty sure Maybe. it might have wow. been 3ds switch but it still had to run on the 3ds which is the important part okay. yeah i, I, I just... remember getting that game at the launch of the switch you're right but it, yeah. yeah i totally believe they do those 3ds as well yeah that game was cool i like that game it was neat. i would love to play it again okay so it came out pretty it came out side by side side on the 3ds the switch but again it still had to run on the 3ds right mm -hmm. right and many people have told me yeah yeah azure striker gunvolt one is the worst one because it was the one that was on the 3ds it does run at 30 frames per second yeah and that's that's just upsetting yeah like they knew damn well that's not okay they worked on countless 2d platformers mm -hmm. anyway okay well, hopefully I'll catch your stream and hopefully you will catch both of our streams. Well, our, all three of our streams soon on Twitch.tv. Goodbye, everyone. Say goodbye to the people, Agro.
Thank you very much for listening to this episode of Big Thing Dimension. Big Thing Dimension is only possible because of you and that game code sent to us by Square Enix. If you would like to support us so we can afford to buy games or send us game codes, I guess, go on over to patreon.com slash GB podcast, where you can get all sorts of commentary tracks, access to exclusive early access to uh, access in um, isolation 119. Patreon.com slash GB podcast. The hell is the black screen? <laughs>